way? Greetings race fans, welcome to Antioch Speedway on Antioch Speedway TV. We're getting set for IMCA Championship Night, Joe. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, last race for the IMCA Modifieds uh, and the IMCA Sport Mods for points. Um, really close battle right now in the IMCA Sport Mod division between Mark Garner and Trevor Kleiman. Just three point difference between them. Settling out tonight, see who's going to take over that, who's going to take that championship. And in the IMC, in the AMOD division, it looks like uh, possibly, I believe, Troy Folger pretty much has it wrapped up as, as a championship right now. I talked to him earlier. He's really not looking for a track championship, even though he is going to wrap it up. But um, should be some uh, pretty good racing, though, tonight. That's right. I'm Wiley Wade. He's Joe Peterson. Sorry about that. Had to take care of a technical issue there. We are here live and direct from Antioch Speedway. It is a 3 8 You're too tall. There, how's that? 3 8 mile semi-high banked oval here in Antioch, California. We're about 40 miles um, to the northeast of Ante uh, excuse me, San Francisco, California, here in the Bay Area. We're the East Bay. We have got a great field of cars here tonight. We have the IMCA Modifieds. As you said, Tricky Troy Folger, he's got a 28-point lead uh, coming into the night over Jim Pettit, that's going to be hard to overcome unless something catastrophic happens to a tricky Troy. Mark Garner comes in with a three-point lead over Trevor Clemens. That one's going to be the battle to watch as far as the championship goes tonight. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, got to, I got to chat with both of them. Uh, both, I don't know, maybe they're just kind of trying to shrug it off. Both said that they're not really focused too much on the championship, um, but still, that lingers in your head and Knowing that you're chasing that competitor and, you know, you're just inches away from that championship is always something that, you know, you want to hold on to and say that you have. We had both those gentlemen on Antioch Speedway pre-race live down from the pits. That is a new thing we started uh, here this weekend. So we're going to go live from the pits having driver interviews um, pre-race each and every Saturday on Antioch Speedway by Promotions on Facebook. Antioch Speedway by Promotions on Facebook. Had them sit down. Um, yeah, like you said, they're not overly concerned about the championship this year. It's all about just going out and having some fun. Yeah, for sure. Um, a few also, I got, to, I got to talk with some of the other ones that are just, you know, for testing-wise, you know, for our up-and-coming big show, as you know, um, the Bill Bowers Memorial, I believe that is in two weeks. So some trying to, you know, relax, not race too hard for the championship night and, um, allow their car to get to <laughs> to the memorial race yeah we got the bill bowers in two weeks but also next week for these guys they've got the pettit down at uh, watsonville so a lot of guys not wanting to tear up their cars for that they got this is the time of year when you start getting into the big money shows yeah for surely the open shows you know the pettit's always one um, that we that we really look at for the pettit family and now the bill bowers memorial and then um also you know later in the year a lot of guys want to start talking about Vegas and uh, stuff like that. So, yeah, it should be exciting. That was definitely one of the conversations we had with a lot of drivers down there today was coming up the Duel in the Desert down in uh, Vegas coming up in November. Also here at Antioch on Turkey Night, our special Turkey Night show. Two-night show on night one. We've got the Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Socks. They're actually running both nights. But then on the Friday night, the 27th of November, we have the wingless and the wing sprint cars and on Saturday night, the 28th, we'll have the IMCA Modifieds and IMCA Sport Modifieds to wrap up our 2020 crazy season. Yeah, for sure. It's, um, it's been a wild one, to say the least. But like I said, always, we really, really want to give a, a thanks to um, our, you know, our owner, promoter, uh, Chad and Tina. They've done a, I can't even say, a fantastic, stellar job with allowing literally the um Antioch Speedway to be one of the only tracks to currently I could say be running actually full time um I just can't thank them enough and you know everybody the sponsors the sites towing and uh Jay's Mobile Welding everybody even you guys that are watching the fans you know um you guys contribute to this as well and um hopefully um uh, soon I can say we can get you guys back in the stands for sure need some fans in the stands that's for sure 
So talking about special uh, events, just looking at our schedule coming up, of course, this, this night is the IMCA Championship night. Next weekend, the Chet Thompson Tribute with the Super Stocks will be here. The uh, wingless sprint cars will be here. Um, that's going to be a fun night, of course. The hard tops for the uh, Chet Thompson Memorial portion. Yes. That, looking forward to that. The following week is the Bill Bowers Memorial Race. Then on October 10th, the Donna Sores, Larry DeMintz Hall of Fame night. Um, during our interviews earlier, had Chris Biggs on, who runs Antioch Speedway Days of Old on Facebook. He talked about that. He has taken over the Hall of Fame night. Uh, Donnie's still helping. Um, you can't get rid of Donnie. Donnie's got a, ma a massive amount of information and knowledge on this racetrack and the, and the racers that have been here. And so that's coming up on the 10th. And they're not going to do any inductions this year because we can't have fans in the stands. But they are ha planning an activity or some activities for that night. On the 16th and 17th of October, we got a two-day show. That is the, uh, the Dwarf Car Open Show for a two-night there. On the 24th, the Hobby Stocks get their own open show, $1,000 to win. For the hobby stocks, they'll be joined by the hard, or excuse me, the tri super stocks, tri-state. Yeah, that should be stocks. pretty exciting. You know, with the amount of hobby stocks that we get consistently on a daily basis, I'm actually really looking forward to a hobby stock open. And um, lingering around, I hear some big names possibly, you know, might be showing up from from out of town as well for that one. Yeah, we got 33 of them here tonight. Last count I saw on the 31st of October. Um, it is Halloween night. Candy for the kids. IMC modifieds. IMC sport modifieds. Super stocks. And we are giving out candy for the kids. Chad's bringing in some bouncy houses. Um, kids may not be able to go out and about and, and trick or treat, but we're going to have candy here. We're going to shut down the racing and we're going to have some fun for the kids. So that's going to be fun. And then we're going to take three weeks off before we have turkey night one and two, Thanksgiving weekend. Forget about shopping on Black Friday. You don't want to watch racing action live and direct from Antioch Speedway. Yeah, for sure. That's uh, Also, I believe we might possibly have a... Thanksgiving dinner as well, so uh. possible Thanksgiving dinner that'll be fun. So, yeah, we got a full season. Uh, we've had a full season started back in late May, th uh, Memorial Day weekend, and we appreciate everybody tuning in on the different platforms. Remember, coming up, the Bill Bowers event is the last race of the year that won't be on Antioch Speedway TV. That will be on Flow Racing. Um, so, on that special three-day show. We will be on Flow Racing. Other than that, we'll be right here on Antioch Speedway TV. Yeah, well, with that being said, um, let's get in the booth and uh, let the action begin. All right, we got hot laps getting ready to uh, happen here shortly. The IMCA Sport Modifieds finishing up mud packing. We will have the Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks coming out with their hot laps in just a few minutes. Don't go away. Thanks for tuning in right here to Antioch Speedway TV. I'm Wiley Wade. I'm Joe Peterson. We'll have been looking forward to a great night of racing live and direct from Antioch, California.
James Thompson, the first one out. For the Jays Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks. He is our, technically not our points leader yet. Um, he had, uh, is four points behind Travis Dutra, but Travis Dutra is not racing anymore as far as in the uh, hobby stock division goes. So he will be overtaken tonight by James Thompson and or the squirrel, Bree Trowan. A tight point battle between those two cars. Right now, James Thompson has a 12-point lead over the squirrel, Bree Trowan. Both of them really wanting this championship. And both have talked about sticking around another year to get it, being this was, they weren't sure whether this year was going to be a point year or not. Some of the cars got out there. Josh Leach said uh, in that 20 car, he said, I'm not giving up this car again this year. He's been sharing that with Abigail Garnerman, Dan Garnerman. So James Thompson coming in tonight. Uh, in essence, our points leader. Thirty-three entries for our Jays Mobile Only Hobby Stocks tonight. Steve Perry's out tonight, and uh, normally the car driven by his wife, Nasty Natalie Perry. Steve hasn't driven in a race in, uh, I think he said, five years. The car was not being used, so it's like, come on out. He's going to come out and bring that thing. He came out Wednesday night and had a successful practice session on Wednesday night. The end of the night on Wednesday night, the last big group of hobby stocks that went out had, uh, shall we say, some ringers in it, and they put on one whale of a show. We had a bunch of the sport modified drivers get into a handful of the uh, hobby stocks, and they went out and played, and that was a lot of fun to watch. Group number two getting ready to come out for the Jays Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks. And their hot lap sessions. Joe, these guys don't have the pressure that the uh, IMCA boys and girls do, but uh, they're still in a points battle with only a couple races left. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and each week we just keep continuing to get, uh, it seems like, the a good amount of them. And, and like I said, man, the they're, they're hobby stock racing lately has just been – for surely spectacular, um, with the with the with two weeks ago the battle with uh, with Scoggins and um, with Scoggins Thompson and 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 Mitch Enos and I mean it's just like I said still I believe this has to be in my opinion vote for race of the year but um, yeah I mean even though they're not finalized in points yet their racing is is still still really good. And speaking of Scoggins, he is not here tonight. Uh, and I'm just double checking. Uh, he's not here tonight. Uh, he he crossed the line second with Enos taking home the win, but Enos was uh, disqualified due to some illegal shocks, if I'm not mistaken. And yes. He he apologized. He sent me a message. He apologized. He was not uh, not aware of that rule here, and so um, that did hand the win back to Scoggins after Scoggins led a good portion of it and only lost the lead about 100 yards from the finish line. Yeah. Up off turn number four. Yeah, very, very great, very um, spectacular, fun battle that they had. Had me on the edge of my seat for sure. And we got our uh, mosquito sprayer out tonight, uh, Chris Bennett in the six car with that car. You know what? I, I think he's afraid to fix the motor and let it keep smoking because he's, since it has been smoking, that car has been the fastest I've ever seen it. Yeah, it's um, it's been pretty quick, even with a uh, when he also hasn't you know been in it as well with um, 
I believe uh, Dalton Jules ran it a few times this year. It's been pretty fast. It's been pretty quick, I should say. So that's going to do it for group number two on the Hobby Socks with their hot laps. Coming out next, there's uh, Bree Troen. She did not have the kind of night she wanted last time out. Broke and went into the night uh, with a 12-point lead over James Thompson in the points and comes out tonight as 12 behind, so a 24-point swing. Yeah, it's, um, I, was, I was kind of looking for her to have the kind of season that she did last year. Uh, with her. She has some spectacular runs from, from the back of the field, and uh, it seems like you know, kind of just this year she kind of struggled a little bit. But um, hopefully uh, she can turn it around tonight, and um, I'd like to see her pick up a W. Yeah, she hasn't taken home that win yet this year. She does have some wins under her belt, nothing this year so far. Not. She's had some nights where that car just didn't go forward. Typically in the past, we go forward. So she's coming up off turn number two in that uh, 97 car behind her. Um, let's see. It normally would be Jason Robles. want to confirm... Yes, Jason Robles, I believe, tonight's racing it. It is his name on the list. Also out there, we got the 11A of Charlie Bryant. Coming up off turn number four, that uh, black car. Then behind him, we got the 225. That's Aiden Ponciano. Changed his number a few weeks ago, the 22 to the 225. Larry McKenzie is behind him, the 24M. And Always then the 10, uh, 32 car of Ken Johns. Yeah, speaking on Larry McClendon, he's always, always quick. I've always, he's always found his way up there in the, in the, you know, top five range. It seems like all the time. Um, one of those kind of sleepers, I would say. Got a gentleman out tonight. Uh, he's not out in this group. Oh, well, the 89 car. We didn't talk about the 89 car. Brian Lloyd, out there tonight. Uh, but uh, Tom Leopold, out of Dublin, California. He hasn't run in 20 years or something like that. He is out tonight in that, uh, the 24 car. That one was out, I think, in the first group, if I remember, where I remember seeing it. Aiden Ponciano spins over there in turn number three. So getting some drivers out of retirement this year. Bringing them back out. If you're looking to get into a racing, Hobby Socks are a good option. Of course, uh, I'm really pushing the, the what well, we're going to change the name to four bang, or, uh, from four bangers to mini stocks. Um, we do have some places that'll build them. Uh, we got some options as far as helping you get them from some auto dismantlers. McEwen's over in Concord has said they will help out. Um, not sure. I'm sure Fernandez may help out too, and I haven't talked to Steve Perry yet, but uh, that may be another option. So some great options as far as that goes. To head on out there and get in a race car. Those. Mini stocks are an absolute bat blast to drive. Got another set of hobby stocks. We got the should be the final final set for uh, hobby stocks uh, coming out. Looks like Chase All will be leading them out in the twenty eight. Twenty eight car. Who else we got out there? Dexter Long at 911. Maddie driving tonight. Nope, Bobby Mott's going to drive that car tonight. Bobby Mott's jumping out of his uh, A mod into the hobby stock tonight. I don't think his A mod's here. No, I don't believe so. Not on the entry list. No. He just came saving his car. Yeah, like we were speaking about earlier, is um, a lot of a lot of guys are are saving their equipment for you know the up up and coming open shows that we have later for the year. Um, not trying to hurt their car, their motors, or anything before the big bunny shows. Good racetrack. I'll tell you what. Wednesday night the racetrack was in beautiful condition. Last Saturday night the racetrack was in beautiful beautiful condition as well. The uh, Chad and his crew, Jason Robles, and all those that are are taking care of this racetrack have just absolutely figured it out and nailed it. These uh, this racetrack is being awesome from week to week. Yeah, kudos to them. I mean, they're doing a fantastic job, and 
from what I've seen, especially you know with the track, the track being changed and being wider and um, the straightaways being um, extended, for what they do uh, e each week, um, every time is I, I think a fantastic job. Track's been racy and been great action. It's going to do it for this group. Uh, coming up next should be the IMCA Sport Modifieds coming out for their hot lap sessions. Looking forward to some great racing here tonight. Uh, all the Haney's are back. Got four cars out of that stable. John, Gene, and Colton Haney. And then Gavin Griffiths all involved in that stable of racing cars. And in the sport mods, we have uh, all three Climans racing tonight. Todd Climans, uh, Trevor Climans, and uh, Tommy Climans Jr. All racing tonight. That's neat that uh, Todd went and uh, bought a race car and is back into racing. I was talking about this is the fourth or fifth race car he's had this year, and the first time he's gotten out was the uh, last time out because he kept buying them and then turning right around and flipping them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> working out well for him. So yeah. the 75 car you can see going down the front straight away, that is no longer uh, Andrew Welborn. That is Nicholas Zapatero has stepped up into the ranks of the Sport Modifieds. Yeah, moving on up. And uh, and at 33 as well, we also have uh, Gavin Espin Espino. Making his way down the front straightaway. And the 12, our last year's track champion, the Iceman, Tommy Frazier. Tommy has not, <laughs> excuse me, not had the year that he had would have liked to have had. He's kind of had some some tough luck this year. Yeah, and, um, getting to talk with him, uh, you know, he's not really, like you said, he's not really stressing about a track championship or whatnot. Um, he's more out just, you know, trying to race here and there and just have fun with it. Um, just kind of the evolution of racing. You have your highs and lows, but um, overall, getting to talk with him, he said he, he's enjoying it, you know what I mean? Even though as you said, the wins may not be consistently coming in, but he's in, he's having fun with it, though. It's, <coughs> excuse me. It's kind of neat. The one thing about the uh, the COVID crud that we're dealing with is that it has changed people's – the way they're racing this year, it's not about the points. It's about just going out and having some fun and trying to win races. Yeah, so it seems like this year. That was checker flag has thrown for the first group of hot lap sessions for IMCA Sport Mods. Group number two to roll off. Group number two rolling off will be uh, a familiar face, 2C of uh, Trevor Clymans, and right behind him is his brother, and the 19C of Tommy Clymans Jr. Clymans brothers. I do want to point out real quick uh, the 27 car of Cameron Swank making his return to racing. Uh, yeah, after uh, I believe after he sold his car then I believe he had a, a knee surgery. Um, good to see him back in a race car and uh, having fun. I know he's he's racing. Also, I've seen he'd be racing the uh, our memorial, our open show here, our Bill Bowers Memorial Show, I seen he had uh, he had posted. So uh, yeah, good to see him back in a car and uh, hopefully shakes off the rust. Yeah, that's who he's talking about. I did interview him. He'll be up on the uh, Wiley's Race Report coming up this week. Talking with him, uh, borrowed his uncle's car to race a few races here at the end of the year. Going to see how things go tonight to determine how much more he's going to do. He will be back for the uh, Bill Bowers Memorial Race. And, you know, it was a long recovery after getting involved in a motorcycle accident back on Easter and shattered his leg. So it's nice to have him back out here. He did sell his car last year and is planning on returning next season for a full season. Uh, can't tell you exactly where. He's still working on that. I have, I have an idea where he's going to be, but uh, it's not up for – we're not releasing that quite yet. But, uh, it's good to have Cameron Swank back. And I did blame him for uh, 
me buying a race car after he got me in a ra his race car last year a couple times, so it's all his fault. It looks like our group number three is coming onto the track right now. Our final, uh, our y the younger brother of them, uh, Todd Clemens in the 100 RY. And also returning uh, from Boone, Iowa, the 22S of Scott Foster. As well as another one returning from uh, Boone, Iowa, who had actually a pretty spectacular run in the number 10, our 2019 IMCA state champion, Guy Allward. Yep, I had reviewed him. He'll be on this week's uh, Wiley's Race Report as well. He was not overly pleased with his performance, although I think he did pretty pretty darn good out there. Uh, but uh, he had fun. He had an absolute blast out there in Iowa. Yeah, he had, a, he had um, I would say, one of the one of the best showings for uh, representing California. As well on the track, we have the 188 defending or defending uh, West Coast Nationals. Now currently it's called the Bill Bowers Memorial um, for your Sport Mod Division winner uh, in the 188 of uh, Kenny Schrader. As well as another driver who's always hot every time he touches the track in the 38 of Casey Keller as a checker flag drop for this uh, hot lap session for the sport mods. Also out there we have a uh, kid smooth, Andrew Pierce. Had the chance to talk to him during our, during our live show, pre-race show. What, a, what an amazing young man. He's only been racing, what, now four and a half months and has succeeded. Uh, doesn't have a win yet. Uh, main event win yet, but uh, made all, all but one main event. He's he's tried to get in this year, including he went in, and raced in three of the five uh, speed week races and made the main event each time. Or four of the five. Four. I'm sorry. Four, four of the five. six. I, I'm sorry. Four of the six. <laughs> yeah, four of the six. Um, you know, and just doing an awesome job. Got a new car here about a month ago. Um, got that car from Kenny New. That's Kenny Co Kenny New's old car. So, doing an awesome job. Yeah, for sure. He's, uh, he's turned a lot of heads. Let's, you know, let's say that. All right, on track now is our, uh, looks like our A mods getting set for their hot lap session. We have uh, 11, 11 entries for our IMCA uh, modifieds, or A mods, here tonight. On track, leading the points. Um, and I believe also I looked up too. He's uh, leading in state points as well. And the 49 is a um, uh, tricky Troy Folger. Troy just out and win races. And I've, I've tried to talk to him about the uh, championship, and he wants nothing to do with nothing to do with talking about it. He is all about winning races. As the green flag drops for a uh, hot lap session for the A mods. As well, also on the track is the number 83 of Kellen Chadwick, also defending uh, Bill Bowers' memorial champion from last year. He's always around. We talked about that uh, during the, the pre-race show, and he's always around in these big money races. He says he goes back to the basics um, for the big money races. He thinks he gets himself in trouble on a normal week just by overthinking things and trying to figure things out. He just tries to do too much. And on the big money shows, he takes a step back and just keeps it basic. Yeah, as the checker flag drop for this uh, hot lap session. Also out on the track, we have the number six. It looks like a, in, a, in a different paint scheme. Uh, Jim Pettit, I believe. Uh, this is two, his backup car. Yeah, two weeks ago, um, if you guys remember, Clay Daly was driving this car yep. that he is in right now. Saving, in other words, saving uh, his good car for saving, his race coming up. Saving some equipment, yes. Um, next weekend down at uh, Watsonville. 
Also on track, um, all the way from Madera, California, we have the 1X of uh, Steven Streeter. Got the JD, or excuse me, Jake Dewsbury and the 2JD here tonight. First one out for this group number two. Yeah, the wrap on that car is... <laughs> Pretty fantastic, uh, uh, the Coors Light wrap. I like that one. Also rolling onto the track is a, a 097 um, Mopar car. That's, the, the, seeing Sean DeForest in that number, I just haven't gotten used to it yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if, if, uh, if you guys know, use, uh, I believe ran the 72, yeah, just the yeah. 70 straight 72. Before, yeah, um, got a new car owner, I believe it is. Yeah, so it is pretty different seeing them in the 097. Also, um, our last year 2019 track champion, track champion in the A mod, um, in the 19K, that is Buddy Niss. Two thousand eighteen uh Young Guns winner in the at the duel in the desert race. I believe he's entered in I believe I talked to him, he said this is, this is gonna be his last year able to run the um the Young Guns race. So I'm pretty sure he'll be looking to try to take home another one, another Got win. J D uh Jake Dewsbury over sitting backwards in turn number two, sorry about that. Having some trouble over there. Yeah, he'll be, uh, this is, he's 19, so next year we'll not be able to do that Young Guns race. So he'll be down there doing that. That's cool. Try to take home another win. I don't think he has had quite the year he expected or wanted to have this year. Yeah, um, we've seen him kind of bounce from, um, I believe he's ran uh, three different cars this year. Um, I know this one is his uh, newly built one. But, um, yeah, that's, yeah, I guess just getting used to it, getting used to uh, something different. Good for him to come back strong next year, I'm sure. Talented young man. In, uh, talented in multiple sports. A, a very good baseball pitcher. pitcher. Um, was supposed to have pitched. I don't think the college season ever got going for Los Medinas, but was on the roster and is still on the roster for Los Medinas College for their baseball program here in Antioch. And that's going to end it for, uh, I believe that's going to be the final hot lap session for the A-Mods. As we remember, tonight is championship night for our IMCA classes. For our sport mod classes, the eyes to pay attention to would be uh, Mark Gardner leading with a three-point lead over Trevor Clymans. And then as for the A mods, I believe it is Troy Folger has a 26 point lead in that division. It's looking like he'll be wrapping up the championship. So basically, uh, Mark Garner has to keep Trevor Clements within two cars with that championship. Got to keep him right there in front of him. He'll be fine. Doesn't have to win. Of course, he wants to win. That's really what he's out here for. If you have not signed up for My Race Pass, head on over, download the app My Race Pass. Has the lineups, has the entries, has uh, 
all kinds of good information on it. Uh, when we get live timing and scoring down the road, when we get to that point, it will be on there as well. So if you don't have My Race Pass, it is a free app. Of course, you can always spend money and upgrade and get some more bells and whistles. But the basic one uh, will get you basically what you need unless you want more. That's a nice thing. It's always if you want more. Getting set, uh, hearing they might do a little bit of track maintenance before we get going. Or may put that off, still waiting to see. Listening to the radio, we are going to pack the top of the ra uh, top from what I'm hearing over the radio. I want to say thanks to everyone out that uh, helps put this show on. It takes... It takes a, uh, a lot of people to put this on each and every week. I just want to say thanks to everyone who comes out and donates time and, and works towards it and helps make this a successful event each and every week. We're getting ready to go racing, folks. That's right. Why is there a person in safety? Huh? Why is there a person in safety? Heat race number one rolling off. Tom Leopold out of Dublin, California, to number 24, starting, scheduled to start on the point outside the front row. It is out of Antioch. Um, that's Chris Bennett in the sixth car. And in your second row in the inside, usually you'll see him in, in his A mod. But tonight he's in the number 13 out of San Pablo, California. That is Bobby Motts. And to his outside out of Oakley, California, in the number 45, that is going to be Gene Haney. In row number three on the inside out of Bellico, California, the 911 of Dexter Long. And outside of him, the 57 of Dustin Himes out of Brentwood, California. And in your final row out of Dos Palace in the number 38, that is going to be Ryan Hart. That is our starting lineup for... Our heat race number one for the Jays Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks. Top three transfer to the A main. We we'll, should have um, two B mains coming up later tonight. 33 Hobby Stocks here tonight. Putting on a great display um, for the Hobby Stocks. Thanks to everybody coming out and supporting that. If you have a Hobby Stock, come on out. Five heat races coming up here tonight for the Hobby Stocks. Packing just a couple times around before we go green flag racing. On this beautiful Saturday night, it is currently right around 88 degrees out here. I want to say hi to Facebook friends. I'm um, here. we got a run in, uh, look in right here on Facebook. Thanks for joining us on Antioch Speedway. Buy promotions at AntiochSpeedway.tv on Facebook. You're watching live and direct from Antioch Speedway on AntiochSpeedway.tv. If you're looking to watch the entire night of racing, head on over to AntiochSpeedway.tv. Sign up, and you can get all the live flag-to-flag -flag coverage live and direct from Antioch, California, here with the IMCA Modifieds, IMCA Sport Modifieds, and the Jays Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks. It is IMCA Championship Night here tonight at Antioch Speedway. We're going to crown a couple champions uh, in the IMCA Modifieds and the Sport Modifieds. The Hobby Stocks still have a couple races left, but the Modifieds and Sports Modifieds come in. We had Tricky Troy Folger on the point for the Modifieds. He's got a, a sizable lead, about 28 points over Jim Pettit in that division. But in the IMCA Sport Modifieds, a three-point difference between Mark Garner and in second place, past champion Trevor Clymans. Garner trying to take home a championship in his second division in the last three years here at Antioch Speedway. He did win the championship um, in the limited late models back in 2018. So he is looking to take home a championship here tonight in the IMCA Sport Modified. So, Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for that race. I'm looking, looking forward to that. I know you spend a lot of time with him. Doubling him up. 
Going green this time around. Get ready, folks. We're going green flag racing live and direct on AntiochSpeedway.tv and Antioch Speedway Bar Promotions on Facebook. Thanks for watching. We're going racing live and direct from Antioch Speedway. I'm Wiley Wade, and he is... I'm Joe Peterson. And we're going racing here at Antioch. Green flag in the air. Green flag drops. And they're side by side. Bennett, Mott, as they go into turn one. A lot of puffs coming out of the number six car. And it looks like he's going to, they're going to bang down the back straightaway. He's going to hold the lead going into turn three. It looks like Mott is going to try to slide in there. And he's going to be denied. Chris Bennett leads lap one. Bennett for that six car. Yes. He's smoking. Yes, he smokes each and every time he brings that car out. Uh, it, the head gasket, I think, or set up something like that. Dustin Himes pulls into the infield, something wrong with the 57 car. But uh, it keeps running. It's not leaking oil, so he keeps running it. And actually, since it's been smoking, seems to be faster than it was before. 69.409 miles an hour that lap, 19.45 on the stopwatch. Yeah, for sure. Like you said, it looks like he's pulling, actually, from the rest of the field. You, as you see, uh, Bobby Mott's gets a little squirrely and it looks like allows Dexter Long to close in on the second place position. It looks like we have a battle with the number 45 of Gene Haney and I believe that is the 38 of Ryan Hart battling for our third place position. And top three to transfer. So right now that's Chris Bennett, Bobby Mott, and Dexter Long, your transfer response. The fourth position is Gene Haney in that 45 car. Once again, the Haney's trying to get all three generations in the main event here tonight with John, Gene, and Colton Haney all running for uh, in the Hobby Stars. Uh, as the cars, as they separate now, and they're holding their line still. Chris Bennett still fluttering away from the number 13 of uh, Bobby Mott. And it looks like now that kind of as he goes along the, the, the puff from the rear end, it looks like it starts to clear. It's actually kind of scary because I'm wondering worried he's running out of oil. <laughs> now let's not let's not let's not jinx him, man. <laughs> Chris uh, Bennett, one of the folks that's going to move up to the IMCA stock cars next year. He went out to Iowa on the Fourth of July weekend and bought a stock car, and it is here. He should have it here in two weeks because we are running the IMCA stock cars in conjunction with the Bill Bowers Memorial Race. He's coming around for the white flag this time by. Yeah, I got to talk to him about that stock car, and he is thrilled. To, uh, to be racing it uh, later on this season and even next year. He's, uh, he's, he's really stoked about, uh, about that class coming here. As he uh, rounds the back straightaway, still has a over straightaway's lead on our second place car, but as he comes out of turn four, it's going to be the number six of Christopher Bennett. Chris Bennett takes out the win. And heat race number one coming across the line. Second is going to be Bobby Motts Jr. in that 13 car. Third and final transfer spot is going to be Dexter Long in the 9 11. Gene Haney will finish fourth. And fifth will be the 38 of Ryan Hart. Sixth will be the 24 of Tom Leopold. Again, Tom not running a race car in about 20 years. So um, nice to have him back out here. A 1969 on the stopwatch at last lap. That's 68.563 miles an hour. Bennett with. Heat race number one. Congratulations to Chris. Bobby Montz and Dexter Long all transferring. Heat race number two getting ready to roll off. And starting lineup looks like, thi like this. On the points, uh, I've talked about them earlier. Normally, this car is driven by his wife, Nasty Natalie Perry. But tonight, Steve Perry behind the wheel. 1980 Monte Carlo with steam line chassis kit. John Keith Trucking and O'Brien's Auto Repair. In the 40 car out of Antioch, Steve Perry. Second on the outside of the front row, the 97 car with Brentwood Auto Parts, Paul's Automotive Service, Ryland Racing sponsored, 97, the Squirrel Bree Trowan. And in your second row out of Oakley, California, and the 225 of the Jerry Fraser Crusher Assistant out of Oakley, that is going to be Aiden Pacciano. And to his outside in the 11A out of Oakley, California, that is going to be Charlie Bryant. In the third row, I found my missing car. In the third row on the inside out of Brentwood, California, that is Colton Haney in the 46 car. To his outside, the 20 car, that is Josh Leach. And in your final row out of Concord, California in the 74A, that is going to be Judy Arth out of Concord, California. As they get set to go green for heat number two, 
Rounding turn four. Green flag's going to drop for heat number two. And already the squirrel shoots out to the lead. As she gets tagged from the rear, she shoots up the racetrack. Oh, she gets, gets hit, hit again. She, oh, and she goes into the backstretch wall. Gets clipped by Judy Arth. Not what she needed on a points, important points night. Yellow flag is out. That Yellow means flag. we will have a complete restart. Damage on the front. Hopefully no major damage on that. Charlie Bryant uh, hitting that car, the 97 of the Squirrel Breed Trolling. Sending her around on the back straightaway. Yeah, as you see, she got tagged by uh, Steve um, Steve Perry, and then she got uh, also hit by the by the 11 of uh, Charlie Bryant, which uh, kind of sent her into the wall. Complete restart, so we'll get them lined up yet again. Um, the squirrel gets to go back up front. The 11A of uh, Charlie Bryant is sent to the back because being credited with that incident. Not what the squirrel needed. She needs to win this race. That'll give her two extra points. And then need James Thompson to not win his heat race. Is what she's hoping. Uh, Colton Haney just wanted to, uh, did, missed his sponsors, Lucky Dog Racing, Flat Tire Racing, and Big Sky Investments on the 46 car. Again, the youngest of the Haney's trying to make the main event here tonight. They did succeed in getting all three in the main event two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. So we are... Uh, they're hoping to do it again tonight. That is so cool. I'll have three generations of ra uh, racing at the same time on the same track. So... I know they're enjoying it, so good job for the Haneys. All right, as uh, Fabulous Bob's going to give him the one-to-go signal, next time by we'll see the green flag drop. Again, uh, if you're watching on Facebook on Antioch Speedway Bar Promotions or AntiochSpeedway.tv, uh, we're going to watch this heat race before we cut out. So after that, if you want to see more racing, just... Head on over to AntiochSpeedway.tv. Just in your address bar, type in AntiochSpeedway.tv. And you can register, sign up, subscribe, whatever it is you want to call it, and watch all the racing action live and direct here from Antioch Speedway. As here we go for a... Uh, light still on. They're working on... Working on getting the lineup. Uh, some discussion going on over the radio, so... So Steve Perry on the point, the squirrel breacher on the outside the front row, row two. It is on the inside. The 225, Aiden Ponciano on the outside, Josh Leach. She's been sharing that car with Abby Gonderman, Dan Gonderman. And Josh said he's not giving it up the rest of this year. He's driving all year, the rest of the year. Um, Colton Haney in the third row inside, and Judy Arth on the outside. As here we go, take two on our heat two. The green flag drops. It looks like this time Steve oh. Perry is going to get out to the early lead as Aiden Ponciano's in the inside of the squirrel breach rowing. They slam together down in turn number one, and they hit again going down the back straightaway. Oh, and breach rowing's going to take the lead to come out of turn four. She's going to lead lap number one. Something wrong with Steve Perry's car. He suddenly has lost three positions in that 40 Yeah, car. he slid up into that slick stuff. The and squirrel here pushes up. Josh Leach was almost there. The squirrel pushed up, lost a lot of ground, but didn't lose the lead. She's now working uh, through turns three and four. Up off turn number four, Aiden Ponciano getting loose. He is in the third and final transfer spot behind Josh Leach and the squirrel retrowing. Yeah, Josh Leach uh, coming from his uh, uh, sixth starting position. The squirrel having all kinds of trouble in turn number two. That car will not turn down on the south end of the racetrack. Wow, it looks like they're playing uh, ping pong the way they're bouncing off of each other. The top three. And now it's going to be Aiden Ponciano in the lead. Josh Leach in second and uh, the squirrel retroing. 
drops to leaves the racetrack. Drops to our third place position. So the squirrel in that final transfer spot. Four down, four to go. We're halfway done. Uh, 19.85 seconds. Steve Perry having trouble. That car just lost the ghost. Not sure he's going to make it off the racetrack. Looks like he does. And it's going to be a four-car battle now. As we can't forget about that 46 of Colton Haney. Steve Perry coming to a stop on pit exit. That is going to bring out the yellow. He is not stopping. Getting the push truck over there. He did come to a stop on pit exit, so that does bring out the yellow flag. Wow, um, pretty good battle going on so far, would you say, uh, in our heat too? Yes. Some, I don't know what it is with Squirrel, but her setup, she's doing fine on the north end here at turns three and four, but that on the exit of turn number two, that car will not turn, and it has cost her, uh, it cost her the lead a few laps ago. Yeah. It, oh, go ahead. They say Aiden Ponciano, though, he took advantage of that and went from third to first in uh, just the exit of that corner. Yeah, just up front right here, we've we seen her throwing the car uh, left and right. I don't know, maybe something could be lost in the handling or... Wonder if uh, it, she did get clipped, got into the wall in the back straightaway there on the opening lap. Maybe on that initial attempt at a start, it may have may have bent something. Yeah. As I believe we get set for restart, this green flag drops. Josh Lee's on the outside of Ponciano, and he's Ponciano still going to hold him off, hold on to that lead. Ponciano, Leach, and the squirrel. And our transfer position. I'll tell you what, if Ponciano didn't hit the wall on the back stretch, he couldn't have fit a piece of paper between that and the wall and the car. That was close. Yeah, he was very close. So our transfer spots, Ponciano, Leach, and the squirrel breach throwing, but Colton Haney saying, hey, don't count me out. I'm trying to get around the squirrel right now, coming up off turn number two, coming around to the white flag this time by. Ponciano getting a little bit loose there in turn number three. Oh, look at Haney throwing it in with the squirrel. He has one more lap. Down to the front straightaway into turn number one. Oh, as the squirrel pushes up, something happened. That car did not turn, and she just lost that transfer spot, and she's losing it coming up off turn number two. But up front, battling for the lead. Josh Leach gets into the back end of Aiden Ponciano, but Ponciano works through it, takes home the win. Josh Leach in second, and that third and final transfer spot, Colton Haney after the 97 of the squirrel breed throwing. Something's wrong. That car just will not turn down on that turns one and two end of the racetrack but uh, Ponciano congratulations taking home the win in heat race number two yeah pretty good uh, four car battle they had there in uh, heat number two not what the squirrel needed she needed that win and not only did she not get the win she didn't get the transfer spots now she's got to do it the hard way to get into uh, the main event coming up tonight with 33 entries here for the hobby stocks the Jay's mobile welding hobby stocks Thanks to Jay Bryant for sponsoring the Hobby Stock Division. On the point for heat race number three out of Antioch, California in the 32 car. Uh, Norm's Auto Machine Quick Gas Stations, it's Ken Johns. Outside the front row, it's 16V of Devin Vaughn out of Antioch, California. And in your second row, in the 24M out of Discovery Bay, sponsored Delta Transmission Victory Graphics, that's going to be Larry McKenzie. And to his outside in the 28, Sponsored by his wife out of Merced, California. That's going to be Chase Awe. Inside of the row number three out of Antioch, California. It is uh, sponsored by Dad. It's a Trans Am out of Orville, California. Actually, it's uh, Brian Lloyd. And to his outside, it is the guy that got the checkered flag last time but was disqualified. Um, guaranteed he has a legal car tonight. Van Hooser Enterprises and Madera's Transport sponsored 72 of Mitch Enos. And in your final row out of Oakley, California, in the 14, the Clemens Racing Enterprises, Clemens Motorsports and Cart Supplies, Trevor Drunk, BNS Racing. That is going to be Logan Fernandez out of Oakley, California. One of our young guns here. He's a, a, a mid-teenager, 15, I think he is. Uh, but, uh, I love seeing the young kids out here racing, get them started. We've got to have them to keep this sport going. So coming around to the green flag, the White light is out. Fabulous Bob is, has control of the field, letting them know that we can go green now. Green flag in the air. Green flag in the air, and it's going to be the 16 of Devin Vagan. Devin Vaughn. Devin Vaughn, excuse me. 
uh, jumping out to the early lead quick, and as, oh, he shoots out kind of a sizable gap, and he's got around turn four, and he's going to lead lap number one. Vaughn down the front straightaway to turn number one. He's got about five car lengths right now over Ken Johns. That third position, that all-important third and final transfer spots to Chase Alcar up for said California to number 28. The fourth position, Mitch Enos. Fifth, Larry McKenzie. Sixth is uh, Logan Fernandez. Seventh is Brian Lloyd coming across the line. Two down, six to go. Vaughn gets kind of squirrely, as you see in through four. Also, Chase All makes a mistake, and that's going to allow Enos to take possibly that no He's denied. All's going to hold on to that transfer position. Enos had the spot, but then his car pushed up on the exit of turn number two and lost it again. That third and final transfer spot. Right now being held by the 28 of all. Ken John starting to smoke, show smoke out of that 32 car, though. Yeah, as you can tell, the track is still uh, still pretty tacky, till still pretty slimy. As you can see, these cars are sliding um, every which way on the racetrack. Vaughn? Up off turn number four, down the front straightaway, halfway done. Four down, four to go, but three-way battle for second spot. Yeah, three Going way. down into turn number one, here he goes up the racetrack, chase off Ken Johns, Mitch Eno, side by side, off the exit of turn number two, that battle for the third and final transfer spot, enters turn number three, and they get together, Ken Johns with the chrome bumper to the back of Mitch Eno's, but right now Mitch Owen Eno says that third and final transfer spot. Yeah, John's lost two positions in, in that battle right there to all in um, Enos. Oh, and our leader, our leader loops it around. Or did he get tagged? And he's still he's still, still going to doesn't lose the lead after all that. He's still going to keep it pushing. Now he has Chase all right on his rear bumper, as well as here comes Mitch Enos. Enos driving that uh, duster. Down on the outside of Awe. White flag coming out this time for Vaughn. Up off turn number four. One more time around battle for second. Those two cars don't want to take each other out. They are qualified, but they come oh. together in turn number two. Put Enos into the wall just barely. Here comes Kent Johns trying to get that third and final transfer spot. Enos hard on the gas. Now he's blown. Oh. Enos blows. That car Can losing he still the Ken Johns is going to work his way around and take that third and final transfer spot. Oh! What a finish to that race. So our winner in the 16V is going to be Devin Vaughn. Got fire under the hood. Second place is... It looks like Enos, yeah, he has a fire under his hood. I just see our DNF crew running out to the track right now. Wow. That third and final transfer spot changed about four different times in that last lap. Working on getting that uh, the fire out there in under the hood. Not the way he wanted to end his day, unfortunately, for Mitch Enos. So our top three for our transfer positions is going to be um, out of Antioch. And the 16V is going to be Devin Vaughn. Second is going to be the 28 of Chase Awe. And our final transfer position in the 32 is going to be Ken Johns. Uh, uh Vaughn fast with the 18.39 on the stopwatch that last lap, 73.409 miles an hour. So we are picking up the speed as this track getting into uh, better condition. Yellow flag back out. So with that, uh, heat race number four, again, top three transfer to the A-Main. On the point for heat race number four. Out of Brentwood, California, it is the 48 of Jeff Benacore to the outside, the 78 car. A gentleman that uh, puts in a lot of hours and a lot of days of the week here at Antioch Speedway. He's the one who does a lot of the track prep. Uh, flavor of Trucking Mama Bear Child Care sponsorship on the 78 car out of Rio Vista of Jason Robles. Yes, and um, in your second row, starting in the inside out of Antioch, California, in the number three, that is going to be Joel Crandall. And to her outside out of Antioch, California, in the 44G, that is going to be James Grazley. Um, the Freedom Alarm, All Bay Answering Services sponsored. And Jewel Crandall just uh, on Wednesday night during the practice session, right at the very end of the night, 
suddenly that car just uh, let loose on the smoke, and there was oil strip all the way down the back straightaway into turn number three. We thought she'd blown her motor. They got back, and thankfully it was just a loss of power steering pump is all it was. Um, so easily fixed, and she was able to make it back out. Um, inside row number three, our third and final row out of Brentwood, California, the uh, fourth and final car out of the uh, – Haney Stables, it is the 47 car with Lucky Dog Racing, Flat Tire Racing, Big Sky Investment. That is Gavin Griffiths. And to his outside, I'm sorry, this is actually the fourth one that we're talking about, the 44. That's John Haney out uh, in that 44 car. He has stepped into the hobby stock ranks with that 44 car. So nice to have the Haney's. So that will be the middle Haney out of the three generations. That's the dad of Colton and the son of John. Yes. Or I'm sorry, uh, Gene. Gene, John, and then Colton. All right, doing a little packing up top. Don't forget, again, coming up next Saturday, we are back on Antioch Speedway TV with all the racing action. But don't forget, in two weeks, the uh, Bill Bowers Memorial Race, that one is not on Antioch Speedway TV. Um, that one will be on Flow Racing. Uh, the big show coming up, that is the last one of the year that we're aware of that will not be on AntiochSpeedway.tv. It will be on Flow Racing for that special event coming up in two weeks on October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. The first, um, I don't think they're going to broadcast anything that night. I don't know. We may on on the uh, Facebook page, but that's just practice night, cornhole tournament, and barbecue, which will be a lot of fun. And then racing begins on the 2nd and continues and finishes on the 3rd with just a $5,000 purse for the IMCA Modifieds and $2,500 uh, for the winner's share for the uh, Sport Modifieds on Saturday night. Not a bad payday. And also uh, to confirm, uh, both the um, Friday night portion and Saturday night is both 1000 to win for our stock cars. As well, um, if you guys don't know, stock cars were added to um, that event, uh, Bill Bowers Memorial. So, Yes, want to say thanks to... Uh, One hour, right? So I do want to say thanks to everyone tuned in to uh, Antioch Speedway Buy Promotions video on Facebook. It was a pleasure to have you. Head on over to AntiochSpeedway.tv to continue watching. It's going to do it for the live look in tonight. So coming up. I want to get that sponsor up. I'm just drawing a complete blank at the moment. Getting these cars ready again. Um, Jeff Benacourt, Jason Robles out there, Jewel Crandall. James Gracely's out there. Colton Haney and John Haney. Doing a little bit of packing. A fourth out of five heat races for Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks. Keep it on our website at www.antiochspeedway.com, antiochspeedway.com. Our Facebook, the official Facebook page is Antioch Speedway by Promotions, Antioch Speedway by Promotions. There is also antiochspeedway.tv on Facebook, antiochspeedway.tv. And then uh, Antioch Speedway Announcer on Facebook and YouTube, where I do my stuff. Uh, we re I release Wiley's Race Report on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock on a normal week. One Hour Train is the sponsor I'm trying to get all the information for, but for some reason the uh, Facebook page is not playing nice right now. Going to double them up, get ready to go green flag racing. Fabulous Bob, give him the X symbol on the front stretch. A beautiful night of race for racing here at Antioch Speedway. Blue skies, which is nice. Again, thanks for tuning in to Antioch Speedway by promotions on Facebook. Um, if you want to keep watching, head on over to AntiochSpeedway.tv. Coming around, green flag, this time by Benacourt. 
up off turn number four. Robles on his outside. Green flag in the air down the front straightaway into turn number one. It looks like Robles lost a wheel cover as he's going to shoot out to the lead down the back straightaway. That wheel cover comes to a stop on the pit exit, so we're oh. good to go. Get a little bit of bumping action there between Jeff Benacourt and Jason Robles. Benacourt's worst to wear on that one. He gets, loses about five car lengths now, going down the front straightaway into turn number one. Yeah, Jason Robles still holding on to that lead. Benacourt and also the 44 of uh, J, um, uh, James Grazley in that final transfer position. As it looks like John Haney is trying to swoop in and take that from him as we have a battle for the oh Haney has a problem with 44 car pulls off the racetrack smoke coming out of the back John Haney not looking like he's gonna at least not gonna make it directly to the main from the heat race still holding on to that strong lead is gonna be Jason Jason Robles second place is uh the number 48 machine of Jeff Bentoncourt Third and final transfer spot, the 44G of James Gracie out of Antioch. Then in fifth is Colton, uh, Gavin Griffiths, I'm sorry. And sixth will be Jewel Crandall in that three car. Fifth spot, excuse me. Four down, four to go for the 78 of Robles. Run right up against the wall down into turn number three. Cuts it in late. I wonder if he's trying some stuff for when the track you know, possibly dries out because he is really taking some chances running that, that close to the wall right now. Well, then down on the north end down there at three and four, if you notice, he comes all the way down to the bottom and on the exit, he pushes way up. He's down right there, down at the bottom and then pushes up. This time he came off about a car width lower than he has been. Yeah, but he's moving, uh, catching lap traffic of the number three of uh, Joel. Joel Crandall right in front of the leader. Jewel in that three car. As Robles is going to see the white flag. Has about a straightaways advantage on our second place car, uh, Benton Court. A couple more corners and uh, Robles is going to take home a, an, an ease race, a heat race uh, win. As he comes out of four. In the 78, your heat race number four winner, Jason Robles. And second is going to be the 48 of Jeff Bencourt. And third is going to be the 44G of James Grazley. And fourth is going to be the 47 of Gavin Griffith. And in your final, in your final spot is going to be the number three of uh, Jewel Crandall. I heard a rumor there on Wednesday that the car I now have, the race car I have, may have been hers previously. I got a Remember to ask her about that. All right, so that gives us another three into the main event. We got one more heat race to go, heat race number five. Coming out, looking at the uh, starting lineup, the 47X of Angela Brown on the uh, point out of Antioch with LB Vinyl sponsorship outside of her. The points leader, the quasi-points leader at this point, the 18T, James Thompson with Hot Shots Motorsports Photography, Big D's Garage Doors, Chad Hammer Racing Engine, Ryland Racing, DeCarlo Racing Products, Delta Graphics, and everyone in the pits. James Thompson out of Pittsburgh, California. Oh, yes. And in your second row in the 71A out of Oakley, California, Climbers Racing Enterprises, Climbers Motorsports and Car Supplies, Trevor's Junk out of Oakley. That is going to be Michaela Taylor. And to her outside is going to be the 29 uh, out of Brentwood, California, is going to be Jake Bettencourt in the 29. And our final row, that 16 car, of uh, Rocky Adam Kajala, Square Level Plum uh, in Concord, Lucky Dog Racing, the Carlo Auto Repair Sponsorship, and her, his outside, the two car of Steve Torres out of Antioch, California. Your final heat race for the Hobby Stocks as they get set to go green. Green flag's going to drop. Thompson and Brown as they go into turn one. One car having trouble, that's Steve Torres down the front straight away in that two car. James Thompson jumps out to the early lead already. Trying to secure his spot into the main. And his points lead as well. Not what the squirrel Bree Tron wants to see. She does not want to see him get the win. Torres just having all kinds of trouble with that two car. Spins again down in turn number three. 
in the end, not even to the turn three. It looks like he's going to make his way back onto the track as James Thompson leads lap number two. He's going to shoot down to the inside of our lap car. Nice to see Angela Brown there running strong in second place. She has had a lot of motor issues uh, this year, and something just came off that car. I'm not sure it was small, but it's white. Just sitting on the racetrack up against the wall in the entrance of turn number three. But so far, it doesn't seem to be affecting the handling. And also in the 29 looks the uh, Jake Bencourt holding on to that final transfer position with the number 16 of Adam Kajala lingering right behind him. Kajala looks underneath Bencourt coming up off turn number four. Not quite close enough to make a move that time. Oh, on our lap car of Steve Torres. Torres spins right in front of Bencourt. As the yellow flag is not going to come out, but that is going to cost Bencourt his transfer position as now Adam Kajala has taken over the transfer position with three laps with three laps left on the board. Coming up off turn number four, our leader, James Thompson, in the 18T, crosses the line, two to go. Across the line in an 18.98 second lap, 71.128 miles an hour. All the way back, almost half a racetrack lead of, uh, uh, over Angela Brown in the 47X. Third is Rocky Kajala out of Concord, California. Jake Bentonport there in the fourth spot. White flag in the air. White flag in the air for James Thompson. It looks like Kajala is actually catching our second place car of Angelica Brown. Possibly could he advance his position. Neither way, they're both locked into a transfer spot. As they go down, James Thompson is going to take the heat race win. As they go into turn three through four, they're side by side. Down the front straightaway is going to be Angelica Brown holding on to that second place position with Adam, with uh, Adam Kajala um, in third. And the 29 um, of Jake Bencourt, a heartbreak, um, getting in contact with uh, that lap car, cost him his uh, transfer position. So Thompson with heat race number five. He transfers to the main event along with Angela Brown in the 47X and Adam Kajala, Rocky, also transfers. Those three cars transfer directly to the main. Angela Brown having uh, the best run of the season so far, I think, for her after, like I said earlier, having a lot of issues uh, with that race car, mechanically wise. So it's nice they finally got the thing straightened out and had a good run with that. With that, we're going to shift gears, so to speak, out of the Jays Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks into we can see who rolls off here. IMCA Modifieds coming out next is who we got coming. Yes, we have 11 entries for our AMOD class. Uh, all 11 entries will advance uh, to the main event tonight. Heat race number one lineup looks like this. On the points out of Oakley, California, with Dutch Transmission, Justin Scott Foster, sponsored 228, Jeff Brown. Outside the front row out of Vacaville, California, Hot Shots Motorsports Photography, the 03 of Kimo Aretta. And second row to the inside out of Oakley, California, in the Pro Motorsports, and Yakima for Black Diamond Builders, Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt race cars in the 83 is going to be Kellen Chadwick to his outside our points leader here as well as the state um, points leader for the a mod and the 49 of tricky Troy Folger out of Oakley California and third and final row the one X of Steven Streeter out of Madera California to his outside it is a 61 car of Ricky Thatcher with Thatcher performance technologies Eastwood industries and Steve Sportsman Cafe, uh, he's out of Mariposa, California. As we get set to drop the green for heat race number one. Green flag's going to drop. And it's going to be... Jeff Brown comes up off turn number two with the lead. Kellen Chadwick second. King or out of third. Tricky Troy Fulton fourth. Tricky Thatcher fifth and sixth. is going to be that Steven Streeter car. As it's going to be Jeff Brown leads lap number one. But Kellen Chadwick's right on his heels. Looking to make a pass. Can he seal it? 
No! Like Jeff Brown. Hold its, uh, couldn't hold its grip down on that low side. Jeff Brown still holds his line. Here comes Tricky Troy on the inside of Kimo Aretta. He's going to take over that third place position. And now he sets his sights on Kellen Chadwick in the number 83. Uh, Jeff Brown slides up the racetrack. That's going to allow... Oh! Kellen Chadwick gets in the side of Jeff Brown. That's going to allow Tricky Troy to take the lead. He moves up three positions in one lap. Tricky Troy, our new leader. Walter, our points leader coming into the ninth, looking to take out the championship for the IMCA Modifieds. Up off turn number two, Kellen Chadwick. Four car lengths back down the back straight away into turn number three. Kimo Aretta up to the third spot now as Ricky Thatcher is up to fourth. Jeff Brown has fallen back to the fifth spot. And then Steven Streeter in the sixth spot. Four down, four to go. From our sixth place starting position, Ricky Thatcher is looking racy as he makes a move on the inside of Kimo Aretta in the 0-3 as he's gonna steal away that uh, third place position. Kellen Chadwick not letting Tricky Troy get away, although he loses a couple car lengths coming up off turn number two that time. Chadwick down into turn number three. He dives it in deep, following in the wheel tracks, wheel tracks of Tricky Troy. Troy, two to go this time by. Tricky Troy sees two to go, as he's still holding on to a sizable lead. Kellen Chadwick, nothing to lose, but nothing to gain either, as Tricky Troy is going to see the white flag come out. 83 is still just stalking his lines, as they're both running the same lines through one and two as well. Down the back straightaway, the 49, Tricky Troy is still holding on to the lead. Coming up off turn number four, Tricky Troy, Folger sees the checkered flag, takes off a win. Kellen Chadwick in that second spot. Ricky Thatcher will get third and fourth with Akimo Aretta. Fifth is going to be the Jeff Brown car, and sixth will be the Streeter car. That one X. Tricky Troy putting a couple more points. Or no, they don't do points on heat races for IMCA, so Tricky Troy just putting himself in a good spot to, for the main event. Congratulations to uh, Tricky Troy Folger on that heat win. Heat race number two getting ready to roll off. And the starting lineup on that looks like this. On the point, our 2019 defending modified champion out of Oakley, California. With Delta Transmission, Rebella Racing, and Altered Canvas sponsorship, it is Buddy Niss. Two is outside out of Livermore, California in the 097 with All Pro Coatings, JGE, and Madeira's Transport, and Lowback Racing Mufflers, the 90, 097 of Sean DeForest. And in your second row in the number six out of Prunedale, California, it's going to be Jim Pettit. And to his outside in the 2JD car out of Martinez, California, in the Extreme Racing Products, Decala Racing Products, Absolute Heating and Air Condition, that out of Martinez in the 2JD is going to be Jake Dewsbury. At the back of the pack out of San Jose, California, Hillbilly Racing and Mott's Machine sponsorship on the 80 car, that's John Pierce. One car not making the call. That is the Jake Dewsbury car. Or no, he's out there. The uh, the zero nine seven of Sean, Sean DeForest, DeForest not making the call. Not making the call. Lights out. We're going to green flag race the next time by. Beautiful night for racing here at Antioch Speedway. Thanks for tuning in on Antioch Speedway TV. Green flag in the air, Buddy Nips. Jake Dewsbury down the front straightaway into turn number one. Jake Dewsbury has the advantage coming up uh, turn number two, but gets a little bit loose right in front of Buddy. Buddy drives to his outside. Here comes Jim Pettit up to the second spot. Buddy Nips on the point. Jim Pettit second. Pettit gets a little bit loose on the exit of turn number four. We're one lap down, seven to go. One lap down, seven to go as Pettit slides up the racetrack. Buddy Niss still holding on to that lead. Jake Dewsbury in third. John Price slides all the way up the racetrack on turns two. Jim Pettit running a heavy line to the center of three and four. And as well as one is two as he's searching and looking to get around our former track champion, Buddy Niss. As now it looks like it's going to be a three-car battle for the first place, for the first place position. Side by side down the front straightaway to turn number one. Jake Dewsbury on the low side. Jim Pettit on the high side. Dewsbury has trouble down on the low side. Turns one and two. 
Pettit drives back out in front, takes that second spot. Carrying that left front tire to, to, through turns three and four is Pettit. Four and four to go as Buddy Ness still holds on to the race lead. But Jim Pettit just still stalking, sitting there in second place, looking where he can make a pass. As he's all the way in the inside, he gets that car real nice and sideways. Still not able to find a way around Buddy Ness. Buddy Ness is going to have to make a mistake for Jim Pettit to get around him as they both running the exact same line through both ends of the racetrack. What a neat thing right there. Two laps ago, we got a 19-year-old cha track champion holding off a West Coast Stock Car Hall of Famer in Jim Pettit. Yeah, the, um, generations racing right there. Hard racing as they're going to see, as Buddy Ness is going to see the white flag. One more time, does Pettit have anything in the back for him? No, as he slides up the racetrack, and that's going to allow the 2JD of Dewsbury to get by. And it looks like one corner through four, Buddy Ness is going to hold on for the heat race win. Buddy Ness wins heat race number two. Jake Dewsbury in the 2JD. And Jim Pettit rounding out. Pettit falling back to the third spot. Last lap is 17.03 second lap. 79.272 miles an hour. It's going to do it for our IMCA Modifieds. That's one of uh, the better runs for, uh, for Buddy this year, at least of late. That car just has not handled quite the way he would like it to. Up next, we're going to IMCA Sport Mod Racing. Coming into the night, three points between first and second. Mark Garner has the lead. Trevor Kleiman's in the second spot. Looking to find the champion here tonight. Yeah, we have 22 entries for the Sport Mod class. And I believe all 22 entries will advance to our A feature tonight. On the point for uh, heat race number one. I'm missing one already. In the 100 RY out of Oakley, California. That is the youngest of the Climans brothers. That is Todd Climans. With Deals on Wheels, or I'm sorry, with uh, Unique Breed, CRT, and Trevor's Junk sponsorship on the car. Two is outside the 75A, Nicholas Zapatero. And, and in your second row, inside, out of Oakley, California, in the M27. That is going to be the kid, Jacob Mallet Jr. And to his outside in the 17B out of Oakley, California. Uh, the Bridgehead Cycles, Bridgehead Cafe. That is going to be Kevin Brown. Inside row number three out of Merced, California. California Comfort, PDC Development, DRC Plumbing, sponsored 33P. That's Gavin Espino. And to his outside, our 2019 champion. Here at Antioch Speedway, custom roof and custom tile specialist, Antioch Muffler, six for less than 12 car. It's the Iceman, Tommy Frazier. And in the final row in the inside out of Antioch, California, the 2019 IMCA Sport Mod State Champion. Deals on wheels, eye detail, Pacific, all spec sheet metal, Ryland Racing, Devil's Mountain Diesel, Brownstone Gardens. And the number 10 out of Pittsburgh, California is going to be Guy Allwart. And to his outside is going to be the 32 out of Richmond, California. That is uh, in the Sunhaven, Sunhaven Builders Mama Bear Daycare Security. Sec I'm sorry, Security Pacific Real Estate. That is going to be Nick Kaufman out of Richmond, California. So if you're used to seeing that 75 car out there with Anthony Wellborn in it, well, he sold the car to Nicholas Zapatero. Wellborn actually going racing again in the hobby stock division um, not here tonight and not only is he going racing in the hobby stock division he bought his wife a car too and they, she was out here on wednesday night for the practice having some fun anthony anthony rode in the passenger seat and he goes i don't think i like being a passenger <laughs> so yeah i'm not sure i'd want to i've been a race uh, a passenger in a uh, on Watkins, Glen Intera uh, Watkins Glen international uh, but not on a dirt track I'm not sure I'd want to on a dirt track. I like being in the driver's seat. Thank you very much. The pa the passenger side does hit the wall. Yes, first <laughs> and hard. I did Daytona. That was the only circle track. I did the uh, Richard Petty driving or ride along 
um, back in the day, 150 miles an hour, about six inches from the wall. That was that was a blast. Coming around to the green flag, Jacob, Jacob Mallet Jr. is actually going to start on the point. Todd Clemens falls to the back of the pack. That moves that inside line up. Green flag in the air. Mallet Jr., rookie, down to turn number one. Moved up from the Hobby Stocks earlier this season, as did Zapatero. Zapatero is only a second race in that 75 car, if I'm not mistaken. And here comes Guy Allward, the 2019 state champion. He's going to have the lead coming up off turn number four, leading lap number one. Guy Allward in that number 10 is going to lead lap number one as he comes from the seventh starting position to first in the first lap. And, oh, they're getting all scrunched up as we see the number 12 of Tommy Frazier making moves to the fifth position. But Kevin Brown is going to take that second place position. Those cars, you got. You said they got bunched up. They got gaggled in that car when uh, Zapatero had trouble in turn number two in front of all of them. So that's what bunched them up. Guy Allward coming up off turn number four. Now with the lead crossing the line. Three down, five to go. Second is Kevin Brown. Third is uh, Kevin Espino. Fourth is the kid, Jacob Mallon Jr. Fifth is Tommy Frazier. Sixth is Coffin. Seventh, Zapatero. Eighth is Climate. As he rounds the turn, still holding on to a sizable lead that looks like he's stretching is the 10 of Guy Allward. Kevin Brown, here comes the Iceman, making moves in a third place position inside of Gavin Espino, but he's going to be denied. Espino holds on to the third place position. We are five down, three to go with Allward on the point. Kevin Brown second, Espino third, Fraser fourth, Hoffman fifth. Battle is for six. Todd, uh, Todd Climates passes Jacob Mallet Jr. But Todd Climates has smoke coming out of the back of that car. Zapatero almost into the fence, coming off turn number two. Two to go. Two to go. And it's a real battle for, it looks like, for the second place position as it's going to be Brown, Espino, and Frazier. As Frazier's looking in the inside of Espino. And can he get the job done? He's going to make the pass, it looks like. Also, he makes a pass on Kevin Brown as well. Run to the white flag. Guy Allward down to turn number three, but Fraser takes the from fourth to second in one turn. Up to that second spot, checkered flag in the air for Allward. One more win in his book. Tommy Fraser's going to cross the line in second. Third is going to be Kevin Brown. Fourth will be Kaufman. Fifth will be Espino. Kaufman will be able to pick up another spot. Sixth will be Kleiman. Seventh will be Jacob Mountain Juniors. Eighth will be Zapatero. So your Guy Allworth, your winner. Uh, Tommy Frazier, second. Kevin Brown, third. Fourth is Nick Kaufman. Fifth, Gavin Espino. Sixth, Todd Kleiman. Seventh, Jacob Mountain Jr. Eighth, Nicholas Zapatero. It's going to do it for heat race number one. Guy Allworth, fresh back from his trip out to Iowa and racing at Boone. Had fun, didn't perform quite the way he wanted. Uh, you can check out an interview I did with him earlier today on this upcoming week's Wiley's Race Report. Heat race number two looks like this on the point out of Modesto, California. It's the 82 car of Joe Salvi to his outside. It is the 7X out of Sacramento, Charlie's Tractor Service, Auburn Golf Course, and Bubba's Transmission. I'm going to go see him. Um, his family owns a golf course, and I like to golf, so maybe I can get hooked up. I don't know. Scott Saval. And in your second row in the 325 out of Oakley, California, in the Bargains Custom Flooring, that is going to be Tyler Brown. And to his outside is going to be the 112 out of Martinez, California, and the Selected One Real Estate, Mike Appliances, Custom Tanks, Speed and Machine is going to be Chuck Crash Golden. Chuck Golden in that 112 car. And inside of row number three of... The 2C, one of the gentlemen going for our championship here tonight out of Brentwood, California with Unique Breeds, Climbins Motorsports, Trevor's Junk, Climbins Racing Enterprises, Aerial Control, BS Racing, JLD Accounting, HRT, Hogue Racing, Shock Service, All Spec Sheet Metal, and CTA Prince. It's a 2C of Trevor Climbins, past champion and looking to win again. To his outside, out of Tracy, California, current Wright Civil Engineers and Surveyors, JR Custom Creations, De Silva Construction, and the 2017 IMCA Sport Mod Champion here at Antioch Speedway, KC Keller. And in your final row in the 27 out of Antioch, California, uh, Whiskey, Whiskey Lane and, Martin, and Martinez, 
the number 27 of Cameron Swank. Cameron making his return to racing here first time this year after uh, had to, he sold his race car and stuff last year um, at the end of the year due to uh, moving or something and then ended up having a motorcycle accident on Easter and shattered his leg and it uh, wants to get back into racing so borrowed his uncle's car and is out here in the 27. He's getting warmed up tonight for uh, upcoming big races coming up over the next month or so. So it'll be nice to, or it's nice to have Cameron Swank back out here. Lights out, we're going green flag racing this time by Joe Salvi on the point. Green flag in the air. Green flag in the air. And it's gonna be, it looks like Savelle is gonna jump out to the early race lead. Ahead of Salvi and here comes Crash Golden as well as Casey Keller on the outside, looking for that third or that third place position. As it's gonna be Savelle lead lap number one. That field goes down to turn number one. Casey Keller up to the second spot, but now Crash Golden runs under, tries to get underneath, but nothing doing. Casey Keller had a great run up off turn number two. That battle for second coming up off turn number four. Savelle still has the lead. Casey Keller second, Golden third. Uh, Salvi fourth, fifth, Trevor Blyman sixth is the Tyler Brown car. Seventh is the Cameron Swain car. As you see, the Casey Keller machine moving up into that seven, or that second place position as he stops Savelle, looking to make a move. Chuck Crash goes and still holding on to that third place position. Trevor Kleiman is trying to look for a way around Salvi and he possibly does down the back straight, back down the back straight away. They were side by side. Scott Saval crosses the line in the lead. He's got Casey Keller on his rear bumper. Coming up off turn number two, the battle for the lead. Back down, uh, down the back straight away into turn number three. Saval, Casey Keller. Keller trying to the lower line, coming up off turn number four. At the line is still Scott Saval in the lead. But here comes Casey Keller. He dives back underneath that battle for the lead up off turn number two. Three laps remain in this eight lap heat race. Casey Keller is a tough one to uh, Try to hold off, and Scott Saval doing a great job right now. Yeah, as you can see, he's checking every which way to get around him. As they're actually pulling away from the rest of the field. Saval still holding on. Here they come to two laps, or actually here they come to the white flag. Excuse me, coming to the white flag. Casey Keller has one more time around. Can he get around Saval? Up off turn number two, down the back straight away. Casey Keller bounces off the wall, coming up off turn number two. Gets down to turn number three, dives to the inside. He's pushing as hard as he can, but Scott Saval with the win. Casey Keller second. Chuck Golden's going to get the third spot. Fourth is going to be Trevor Kleiman. Fifth is going to be uh, Joe Salvi. Sixth will be the Tyler Brown car. And seventh will be Cameron Swank. Casey Keller gave it everything he had, but just could not get around that 7X car. So Scott Saval, Heat 2 winner. Again, everybody makes the main event here tonight for the uh, IMCA Sport Modifieds. Third and final heat race for the Sport Mods in the final heat race of the night coming up. On the point. Out of Oakley, California, Somerville Pest Sup, uh, pet Supply, excuse me, Kellen Chadwick Motorsports. Inox Bats sponsored 22F. So Scott Foster, two is outside. The 156 out of Antioch, California. That's Jacob Haas. And in your second row, one of three of the brothers, of uh, the Clemens brothers, and the 19C, uh, Clemens Racing Enterprises, Clemens Motorsports and Car Supplies, Trevor's Junk, and the 19C out of Oakley, California. That's going to be Tommy Clymans Jr. And to his outside, and the 15P out of Oakley, California. That is going to be Kid Smooth Andrew Pierce. On the inside of road number three, it is our points leader out of Antioch, California. That is, of course, Mark Garner. To his outside, it's Kenny Schrader out of Pacheco, California in the 188. And in your final row is going to be the 78 out of Series California. That's going to be Frank Cefalo uh, Jr. Cefalo Jr. I'm sorry. 
down the front straightaway and turn to one. Scott Monster pushes up the hill. Here comes Tommy Clemens. Junior picking up the lead and splitting him. Oh! Oh, and Scott Foster gets right in the back of our points leader, Mark Gardner. That could have been disastrous. Kid Smooth out of trouble down in turn number three as well. He had to get hard on the brakes. Something's wrong with that 22 S car. That car just not handling well. Not sure why he got in there and got in the back of uh, Mark Gardner, but thankfully Gardner's still able to go. And it doesn't look like any worse for wear. Nevertheless, our leader, Tommy Clemens, Tom Clemens Jr. holding on to the lead. And second, our points leader, Mark Gardner. Tom Clemens Jr., Mark Gardner, first and second, third is the 156 for Jacob Haas, fourth is Kenny Schrader, fifth. That's 22 left from Scott Foster. Still having trouble on the south end of the racetrack. Sixth is the young man, uh, Andrew Pierce, seventh. It's uh, that, that car just cracks me up. Frank Sapaiello with the uh, toilet seat on the door panel. Coming up off turn number four. Comes our leader at the line. Three laps remain. Three laps left for our leader, Tommy Clements Jr. As it looks like they're all kind of spread out in the same car lane. None are really gain in position on each other. Second place, our uh, points leader, Mark Gardner in the 76. Jacob Haas in the 156. In third, with Kenny Schrader in fourth. As Clemens is going to see the white flag. One more time around, top one is shooting down to turn number one. Mark Gardner cut his lead just a little bit. Uh, but Garner really has nothing to lose. He just hang on. He just got oh, to yellow, get yellow, up yellow. Two cars together. Frank Cefaello. The yellow flag is is out. Uh, Frankie Cefaello and Andrew Pierce come together down in turn number three. Last lap is 16.84 on the stopwatch. 80.166 miles an hour. Pierce rolls away. Frankie Saifaiello still sitting there. Pierce in that 15P, a new car for him. Third timeout or fourth timeout for him with that car. The young man. Waiting to hear uh, over the radio while they were talking about a different incident. It sounds like. Uh, what the cause of that was, it was a 15P Andrew Pierce, but uh, looks like we're gonna give him the one to go signal this time by. So our lineup looks like this, Tom Clemens Jr. He's on the point, Texas style restart. Second, Mark Gardner. Mark gets to choose the inside or outside, he chooses the low side, puts the 156 of Jacob Haas on the high side. Fourth, the 188 of Kenny Schrader out of Jacob, California, two is outside, the 22 out of Scott Foster at the back of the pack. The 78 car of Frankie Saifaiello out of the series, California. Looks like they're going to have a one lap shootout. I believe it's going to be a green white. Yellow flag still out. Got uh, some debris or something over in turn number. No. Nope. Looking for a radio? Did I hear that right? All right, the radio has been found. An odd thing they'll have to find, radio. Green and white coming out at the same time. It is a one lap shootout here. All right, can Tommy Clements Jr. hold on to pull off the win? Can Mark Garner take over? He's been chasing him the whole race, but not able to get, not even really get close enough to even try to take over the win, take over the lead. Jacob Haas sitting there. 
looking to take home a win here tonight. It'll all be decided in one lap. They're coming around the white and green flag coming out in tandem right now. Green flag back in the air. Dominic Miles Jr. down the front straightaway to turn number one. He's got Mark Garner right on his inside. Garner has to fall back in line. Um, Sacriello having trouble in turn number two. But back up front, Tom Clements Jr. Coming up off turn number four. Checkered flag in the air. Tom Clements Jr. is going to win. Garner second. Moss third. Fourth, Schrader, and fifth will be the 22S of Foster. Sixth will be Saifaiello. And that's going to do it for our Sport Mod Heat Races. That's going to do it for our Heat Races. We are done with the Heat Races tonight. That means we're going to have a brief interview. Uh, we're going to do B-Mains first before we do our intermission. So B-Mains looking like this for the Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks. Got two B-Mains coming up tonight. Waiting for the drivers to get up there. And B-Main number one on the point out of Oakley, California. With big investment sponsorship on that car, the 45 car. That's Gene Haney to his outside. The 24M out of Discovery Bay, Delta Transmission, VictoryGraphics.net. Sponsorship on the Larry McKenzie Jr. car, the 24M. And in your second row in the 29 out of Brentwood, California, and the Brentwood Brothers Construction, that's going to be Jake Bentoncourt. And to his outside is going to be the 40N of Steve Perry. And the uh, steam line chassis, John Keith Trucking, out of Antioch, California. Inside row number three, out of Antioch, California, it is Jewel Crandall. Jewel Crandall in the number three, starting in the fifth spot. Sixth, it'll be the 24 car out of Dublin, California, of Tom Leopold. And in your fourth row, uh, in the 89 out of Antioch, California, uh, sponsored dad uh, out of Orville, I'm sorry, California, is uh, Brian Lloyd. And to his outside, in the two out of Antioch, California, is going to be Steve Torres. In the back of the pack on the 11A out of Oakley, California, that is Charlie Bryant. That is our starting lineup for... B main number one here tonight. Again, you can see all the uh, lineups on my race pass. You can go to my race pass. Ten laps. Top three transfer to the feature tonight. But yeah. So top three transfer. Waiting for a couple of more of the, the cars to get there. So uh, real quick, want to touch base. Want to say thanks uh, for Bentoncourt uh, on the Jake Bentoncourt. Want to say thanks to the Bentoncourt Brothers Construction and East West Renewables sponsors on that car. Steve Perry, the Streamline Chassis, John Keith Trucking O'Brien's Auto Repair Sponsorship on the 40N. Uh, it's great to see Nasty Natalie Perry out here um, taking care of some medical issues. So Natalie able to make it out tonight. It was great to see her walking around the pit area. Miss having her out here at the racetrack. Good to see her. I want to say thanks to all the officials that come out each week and help put this show on. Fabulous Bob there. We got Matt, and Mike, and Carl, Larry Adams. Thank you very much, Larry. Does a whole kinds of stuff, not just officiating um, down there. Um, the other officials that are helping out and doing a great job. Thank you very much. The DNF crew sitting down there. Um, they volunteer their time coming in and help get the accident scenes cleaned up here at Antioch Speedway. The DNF crew did not finish crew. Got to say thank you to them. Wait, can't wait to get all of them back. Mike and Deborah not able to make it uh, so far this year due to COVID stuff. Uh, do miss you guys, so can't wait to have you back out here for racing at Antioch Speedway. Got to say thanks to Andrea, the scorekeeper. Does an amazing job, um, a job I would not want to have to do. E. Um, 
doing the scoreboard. Thank you very much, E, for doing the scoreboard. Joe, thanks for sitting up here, sitting next to me, and joining in on this uh, broadcasting thing we got going on here. Thanks to Chad and Tita Chadwick for the great job they're doing as new promoters here at Antioch Speedway. Coming around, green flag this time by B-Main. Top three transfer, 10 laps. Down the front straightaway, Gene Haney gets there first. Larry McKenzie falls in line in that second spot. The third place guard, Brian Lloyd. That is the third and final transfer spot right now. And Steve Torres in the fourth spot. Je uh, excuse me, Jake Betancourt in the fifth, sixth. In the 11A, Charlie Bryant, seventh, Joel Crandall. One lap down. One lap down. As you said, we're missing a few cards from it looks like from this B-Main. But still holding on to the lead. Gene Haney, it looks like Larry McKenzie's now applying some of the heat to the rear end of that. Oh, as he slides out on turn four. Hits the wall hard coming up off turn number four. Rides the wall all the way down the front straight away. Oh, and he's going to come to a dead stop. I think that car is broken now. I think the front end on that broke when he hit the wall. It, uh, it hit hard and rode the wall all the way down through Larry McKenzie in that 24M. He yeah. just pushed up on the exit of turn number four and, and got into the wall, and it just rode that wall yeah. all the way down the front straight away. One problem you can have when you're riding that wall down through there is if you catch that opening right there below Fabulous Bob. Um, that'll tear up your wheel real quick. Um, he's trying to roll away. Could, he's got a flat right front. Seeing him. Yeah, somehow he's... Somehow he's able to roll off. That lap was an 18.70. Second lap, 72.193 miles an hour. He's going to have to go get that right front flat fixed. Gene Haney, if you watch his line, he stays low down the straightaways. Um, always does it. He comes up off the turn and just doesn't drift out to the wall like a lot of people do or even partway out to the wall. He, stay, he keeps it tight down on the inside. For how hard he hit that wall, just a flat tire is kind of kind of beyond me. He pulls it back to the pits. We're going to give him the one to go signal this time by. He does not get two laps due to uh, it was a reason for the yellow. So Larry McKenzie will not make the main event tonight. Again, check out my race pass for lineups and results from here at Antioch Speedway. Larry McKenzie came into the night uh, 64 points back of Travis Dutra, so 60 points back from uh, James Thompson in the four spot. That's going to hurt him. Jake Bentoncourt, um, 86. So there's 22 points between them. This could uh, cost Jake, uh, excuse me, Larry McKenzie, a points position, potentially if Jake can get up and get into the main event and have a good enough finish. Two down, eight to go in this 10-lap B main event for the Jays Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks. Green flag back into it. Eric Gene Haney on the point, down the front straightaway, into turn number one but on the outside. Here comes that 11A of Charlie Bryant driving hard in that 11A. Up off turn number two, but Gene Haney gets a good run down the backstretch. He gets out of the gas much sooner than Bryant does. Bryant takes the lead coming through three and four. Up off turn number four, 11A is our leader. Yeah, Bryant trying to recover from uh, that heat race uh, mistake that he had. Make his way into the feature. Our third and final transfer spot right now. Battle going into turn number three. We got the 89 of Brian Lloyd on the inside. Jake Bentonworth on the, or I'm sorry, Brian Lloyd on the outside, Jake Bentoncourt on the inside. That lap, it was Bentoncourt with the advantage, but here comes Lloyd on the outside as that battle for third oh, the final transfer spot. Larry McKenzie spins down near turn. And yeah, he's going to send it back to the pits. I think Larry's uh, not happy at the moment. He's had a rough few minutes. As the race continues, our leader still in that 11A is uh, Charlie Bryant with Gene Haney in the second place position and in the 29 of Jake Bencourt rounding out your final transfer spot with four laps to go. 
Our fourth position is the 89 of Brian Lloyd. Fifth is the two car of Steve Torres. Sixth is Jewel Crandall. So the remaining cars for B-Main number one. Top three advance. Our leader has smoke coming out of the back. Has some problem. Pushes up high into turn number four. Almost into the fence. More smoke coming out of that car going into turn number one. As he slides up the racetrack, allows Gene Haney to gain a little bit of ground on him. That 11A just not handling right through the north end of the racetrack. Two to go, though, this time by. He's only got a hold for, hold on for two more laps, but here comes Gene Haney. He's getting closer and closer. Yeah, he's right in that middle lane, and he's uh, he's hopping and skipping. It looks like a little bit of smoke coming out as he's going to see the white flag. Can he hold off Gene Haney one more time? Gene Haney and Jake Bettencourt, your other two cars that are qualified for the main event in this with one lap to go, half a lap to go down into turn number three. They're in the lap traffic. Get around Jewel Crandall, does the leader. Now he's trying to get around Steve Torres. Here comes Gene Haney. Checkered flag in the air. The 11A of Charlie Bryant takes home the win and transfers on. Gene Haney gets second, third, Jake Bentoncourt. Fourth is going to be the 89 of Brian Lloyd. And fifth will be the uh, two car of Steve Torres. But our transfer cars. Charlie Bryant, uh, Gene Haney, and uh, Jake Bentonport all transferring to the main event. With that, heat, uh, B main number two looks like this on the point. Someone that needs to get into the main event desperately to uh, keep in the points race out of Antioch, Brentwood Auto Parts, Boston Automotive Service, Ryland Racing, DiCarlo Racing Products. Uh, Browntown Motorsports, Delta Graphics, Bob Newberry, Mom, Dad, and Scott. It is the Squirrel Brianna Troen outside the front row, the 47 car out of Brentwood. Lucky Dog Racing, Flat Tire Racing, Big Sky Investments of Gavin Griffiths. And in your second row in the 38 out of Doss Palace, that is going to be Ryan Hart in the Doss Palace Mini Storage, Hart Paving, Ryland Racing, number 38. And to his outside, the number 72 out of Manteca, California, the Van Hoosier Enterprises, Van Industrial Transport, J Joe Blade Enterprises, 72 machine of Mitch Enos. Not sure if Mitch is going to make it out. Looked like he may have blown up. No, he did make it out. All right. The row three, 71A out of Oakley, Climbing Racing Enterprises, Climbing Motor Sports Cart Supplies, Trevor Junk, BS Racing, East Bay Welding Supply, Michaela Taylor at Tours Outside, to her outside, the 74A out of Concord, McHugh's Auto Wrecking and Towing. Diggers Diner, George V. Arth and Son Auto Body, and Teresa Bale, sponsor of Judy Arth. And in your fourth row, the, in the 44 out of uh, Brentwood, California, that's going to be John Haney. And to his outside, it looks like he didn't make the call, the 57 of Dustin Himes. And in our back of the pack, the 14 car of Oakley, California, young men, Climbins Racing Enterprises, Climbins Motorsport and Cart Supplies, Trevor's Junk, BS Racing East Bay Welding Supplies, the 14 of Logan Fernandez. Dustin Himes with Aerial Control, C2 at Cattle, Marjorie Farms, Quality Aero Maintenance, and Kirk Welding Sponsorship not making the call in that 57 car. He did not finish his heat race. So obviously, some mechanical issues on that race car. Here tonight, hopefully he'll make it back out on the 10th of October. Next time the Hobby Stocks will be back. The Squirrel Bree Troen needs to get this transfer and get into the main event. Bringing him around, she has control of the field. Green flag in the air. The Squirrel down the front straightaway. Got the advantage going into turn number one. Right on her rear bumper is the 38 of Ryan Hart and the 47 of Gavin Griffiths. Those are the top three, but here comes that 72 car of Mitch Enos. That car is fast once again, that duster. He passes to the outside. Gavin Griffiths, three wide at the line. Give it to the squirrel, but here comes Mitch Enos on the high side and the 38 of Ryan Hart on the inside. Yeah, Mitch Enos blasts past the front runners. That car is fast right now, that 72 car. Yes, he's just car. putting a well on the rest of the field in the 72. It looks like a battle between uh, the squirrel retroing and Ryan Hart actually going on for that transfer position as well as Gavin Griffith once again in the mix too as well. Back in the pack, I did hear the 74 of Judy Arth is having a problem. Uh, wait to see if she has to pull in. But the second place has been straight, 
straightened out right now. The squirrel reach Rowan has it. Third and final transfer spot. Brian Hart is in third. Fourth to 47 of Gavin Griffiths. Fifth, Logan Fernandez. Sixth, uh, Kayla Taylor. And Judy Arth pulls off in the 74 car. Still out to at least half a track length lead over the rest of the field. Mitch Enos with four in, six to go. As the squirrel breach on, she holds on to that second place position. But here comes Ryan Hart trying to throw it in, as well as Gavin Griffith in that fourth place position. We are halfway done, five down. She's oh, coming oh, around to complete six. Uh oh, the, the squirrel looks like she's going to blow. Problems for the squirrel. Smoke coming out of that race car. Down into turn number three. More smoke coming out. The squirrel, not what she needs. She needs points. Looking to see if uh, any fluid on the racetrack as our leader comes up behind Michaela Taylor. He's got a full half a, half a racetrack lead over the squirrel retrowing. Not sure what that is yet. Starting to get pretty smoky visually wise up here for us in the booth. As she's still moving with two laps to go. Mitch Enos is still clocking him off because he's holding on to that lead. She's holding on to the transfer spot still. She's not giving it up. Coming by, white flag next time by for our leader, Mitch Enos. He comes up off turn number four. I thought Chris Bennett's car smoked. Holy cow. The squirrel reach throw, unable to hold off second. Throwing up a smoke screen. Keeping the 38 in that third and final spot. That's Ryan Hart. White flag is out. Coming around, Bree Trowan seeing the white flag this time by. As Mitch Enos comes around, turn four, almost inch near fourth place, but he's going to win. B main number one is going to be Mitch Enos. Mitch That's Enos with the, win, with the win. Here comes the squirrel, Bree Trowan. Can she finish? What is going on with that car? We're going to have to find out. Up off turn number four, she is going to transfer, get that third or second transfer spot. And at the line, we have a new third place. Gavin Griffiths gets the third and final transfer spot and puts the 38 of Ryan Hart back into the four spot. Mitch Enos. What a fast race car, 1846, 73.131 miles an hour. Having the squirrel breed throw and come in just to make sure, make sure there's no flames or anything. They're gonna take a look before they let her go back to the pits, just in case we don't want her to get her back there and have a fire back there, because uh, we have better fire response here. On the, yep, and there comes the fire right there. Fire just erupted underneath the 97 car. Got uh, officials down there and immediately get the fire extinguisher on it. She may not be able to make the main event. I hope she does. Big time points are in store here tonight. That's going to do it for our heat races and our B mains. Last lap at 18.46 on the stopwatch, 73.131 miles an hour. With that, it is time to, for our intermission. Thanks for tuning in to Antioch Speedway TV. We got uh, going to play you the uh, latest and greatest Wiley's Race Report, at least the audio of it, coming up in just a moment. Uh, first, I want to remind you, keep an eye on our website at www.antiochspeedway.com, www.antiochspeedway.com. Also, don't forget the Facebook page, Antioch Speedway by promotions, Antioch Speedway by promotions. Also, AntiochSpeedway.tv on Facebook, AntiochSpeedway.tv. And then I'm Antioch Speedway announcer, Antioch Speedway announcer on Facebook and YouTube. All the places to find all the latest and greatest. You don't want to miss it. With that, uh, right now, here's this past Thursday's Wiley's Race Report interviews from last week's race winners. Also, Chad Chadwick uh, had a brief interview with him, uh, along with some other stuff. You can see this coming up. The latest episode will be out on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Hello, race fans. I'm Wiley Wade, and this is Wiley's Race Report.
Hello, race fans. I'm Wiley Wade, and this is Wiley's Race Report for Saturday, September 12th, 2020. We had the Volley Four Bangers, we had the Super Stocks, we had the Delta Dwarf Cars, and we had the Wingless Sprint Cars all in action on Saturday night. And we'll get back to that in just a moment. First, I want to remind you this upcoming Saturday, it is IMCA Championship Night. That's right, the IMCA Modifieds and IMCA Sport Modifieds are going to crown their champions for the 2020 season. They'll be joined by the Jays Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks. You can see all the action on Antioch Speedway TV. That's the place to be is Antioch Speedway TV. Just head on over to AntiochSpeedway.tv and subscribe for this Saturday's action live and direct from Antioch Speedway where action is the attraction. Back to this past Saturday night, the 12th of September. In the four banger action, they had the biggest field of the 2020 season. 13 cars showed up and Chris Corder took home the win in the number 68 Chevy Cavalier. Congratulations, Chris on that main event win, another one for him on the season at Antioch Speedway. In the Super Stocks, Fast Freddy Ryland was driving the number 99 and swept the night, taking home the heat and the main event win, filling in for Jim Freethy. Sean Drones, driving the 80N Delta Dwarf car, took home the win in the main event for the Dwarf cars after an amazing battle all race long with drivers including Ryan Winter, Captain Chaos, Danny Wagner, and Mike Grennert. Spanky over there in the number 12 car. But uh, Sean Jones took home the win at the end of the night on that. And then in the wingless sprint car ranks, well, Sean Jones doubled it up. He was doing double duty and took home two main event wins, driving the number 24 wingless sprint car. He had a, a great race holding off a fast charging Dylan Bloomfield. And for this week's interviews, well, it's a little different again. I had the opportunity to take my camera with me, and I recorded my winter circle interviews for both the Delta Dwarf cars and the Wing Sprint cars. Check them out. Sean Jones, uh, congratulations. That was a whale of a race. Yeah, that was awesome. The track was so much fun, you could run pretty much anywhere. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, I don't know what happened to Ryan, but I think he would have had for me. The power steering kind of was going in and out, so it was do some twitchy things, but I still held on, so it was awesome. Can't wait to run the sprint car race. Yeah, you got one more race here tonight, but uh, it took you a little bit. You had to you had to battle for this lead. You, Danny Wagner, Ryan Winters, um, you guys just put on a whale of a show up there. Mike Renner was involved in that as well. All four of you just running real hard the first like, half of that race. Yeah, they're the best out here, so running with them week in, week out, it's, that'll make all the other guys in the field faster if, if they keep running with us. So It's awesome to run with them. And, it's always good, clean racing, and the track is perfect tonight. So, I want to thank everybody that made that happen. And we're out here racing. So, you got one more to go. How are you going to do in your uh, sprint car? You were doing pretty good in your heat race. Yeah, the heat race went well. Uh, we're going to start first in the main. So, only hopefully I'll just stay there, I guess. You and uh, Danny love racing against each other. Yeah, yeah, we race hard together. We rub a lot, but it's usually pretty clean. And I think he probably had a good time. I think he finished third. So yeah, it was fun racing with them. I wasn't sure who was going to get the lead first uh, here at Spanky, so I'm glad I got there first. John Jones, winner of tonight's uh, main event for the Delta Dwarf Cars. Congratulations. I'll let you head on over and get your uh, get a picture real quick and then get into uh, your sprint car. Ryan Winner. Man, you, had to, you started dead last at the last restart with eight to go when you finished second. Great run up through the field. Yeah, uh, I didn't drive a good race. Uh, uh, I got caught up. Someone spun me when I went down low on one of those restarts, and uh, my rack was holding up, but I thought I could hang on in the middle of the corners, but obviously I didn't. I tangled up a couple guys and then went to the back and then just uh, got lucky. I, I hit my marks right, and I got up to second, and Sean was gone by that time. It was just kind of a survival mode. Headers are destroyed. The motor wasn't running good after the headers got destroyed, but second, I'll take it. Nice run, you had a great battle all race long. Uh, you guys just had a lot of fun looking like uh, with the top four there. Yeah, it was actually a really racing track. Uh, you can put a slider, you can go to the bottom, you go to the top. It was, it was a really good race track. All right, Ryan Winter, congratulations on your second place finish. And now, Captain Chaos, Danny Wagner. Hey, Wagner. What happened? Something you, you were 
battling for the lead, and it looked like at some point, about halfway through that race, suddenly your car looked like it lost its handle or something. Yeah, car kind of went away a little bit towards the end, but we got a little mixed up and got in that wreck over there, and the front end, but here we are. We finished, and John and Ryan and these guys are really fast, so what can you expect? I know you have told me before that you absolutely love racing against John Jones. Oh yeah, he's the best it gets, so just to chase him, he's been doing it a long time, and is really fast, and so we'll just turn around and see if he can win this sprint car race. All right, so what you got uh, coming up? I know you're getting set for a big event coming up at Marysville, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, two weeks we go to uh, Marysville National, which is the biggest Western States National of them all. So uh, we'll put the cars away for a week or two and get ready for Marysville next in two weeks. And then after Marysville in October, you got a special two-day show coming up here at Antioch Speedway, the uh, D uh, Dwarf Bar Open. Yeah, we'll be back for the uh, Dwarf Car Mania in October. I think it's like 16th, 17th, 17th and 18th. Yeah. 17th and 18th. Yeah. So we'll be back here for that. And we got a couple other big ones. We got a Twin 20 race in Petaluma on the 10th. And we'll be kind of bouncing around, and then we end up in Mojave in November. All right, Danny Wagner, Captain Chaos. Uh, I would say the first year of the Delta Dwarf Cars has been a success. Yeah, it is a success, and hopefully next year all we can do is make it bigger and better. Have a big national race here. I want to make it bigger than Marysville, but we're going to go to the biggest one in two weeks and try to make this one bigger next year. All right, Danny Wire, congratulations. Good run tonight. Thank you. Hey, seems like we did this earlier already. Yeah, you never get old, so I'll keep seeing you as many times as I can. So you took the, the lead around lap number three, and it uh, didn't have a whole lot of pressure once you got, the, got out on the point. Yeah, I wasn't sure how close he was behind me. The track changed so much, and I was just trying to, trying to search, not really search, but just try to hit the marks and kind of just judge with the track is how much grip it had for, for the right rear. I was hoping the right rear was still there at the end of the thing. That stuck for DJ, he was going to be really hard to beat, and he got tangled up in that lap traffic. So I, I would like to see what happened if we could race together. He was, he was really fast in the beginning. And I was hoping he was at least going to make it back out. It would have been fun to watch him run up through, but uh, you were able to hold off. You had Dylan Bloomfield uh, behind you, the 14-year-old. He uh, tried to get a shot at you a couple times and couldn't quite get there. Yeah, I saw him. He kind of kicked his nose there a little bit. I think he's so damn fast. You know, he doesn't have any experience really in the spec He's right there with me. And, you know, I've been around for a little bit. So. <laughs> yeah, he's got... Thankfully, I think he's not going to stick around for too, too much longer because he's just going to go flying and do a wing sprint car ride and all kinds of fun stuff. So he's a very driver, very crazy. It's uh, very impressive to see what he can do. Who do you want to thank for uh, getting you out here each and every time you come out? My mom, always. She can't be here, she be here tonight. Uh, and all my family, my dad, now and always helping me out in the sprint car. And, you know, it's a team, team thing. You can't just go out here and do it just on your own. So, uh, DRI, get in the shots, Ryan Diotti. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, Sean Jones, winner of tonight's Sorry. Delta Dwarf Car event and the Wingless Sprint Car event. Congratulations. Let's head on over here to uh, Dylan Bloomfield. Hey, Dylan. Dylan? Come on out here, real quick. Get you on camera. Finishing second, tonight's uh, main event. So last time out, you led most of the race and then lost a motor. You came out last week, tested your motor, got a new motor in that thing, uh, and a good, strong second place finish tonight. Yeah, uh, Sean Jones is way out there, and he was faster tonight. And I think at the end there, I think we might have been losing a motor or something again. Uh, something's wrong, but it seemed like you were slowing down, going down the straightaways, and we got a lot of temperature in the motor, so something's wrong there. I can't thank my team enough, man. They've helped me out so much. And, uh, they're always uh, out until midnight working on my car. And, uh, it's pretty awesome. I can't thank them enough and all my sponsors. I mean, uh, it's it's awesome. Just also, also being 14 and being second in place and winning and all this stuff. And it's awesome. Other than your blown motor, you haven't finished worse than sixth in your sprint car career. Yep, yep. And I don't think... Other than the blown motor, you haven't finished worse than fourth here at Antioch Speedway, if I remember correctly. Yeah, probably. I think so. I think you're right. So, great job. So, you at the end of the race there, you were having a heck of a battle with Matt Streeter in the 3F. Yeah, we were. That was fun. He, he threw some crazy sliders. I threw some crazy sliders right back at him. And I love when we 
a clean race. I mean, it's pretty awesome, especially Matt, racing with Matt Schreiner. It's pretty cool. So. Dylan, who do you want to thank for getting you, getting you out here each and every week? Everyone, my mom, my dad, Willie, Sue, Jerry Stick, um, Ralph Day, East Bend Meal Prep, um, my grandpa, Napa Auto Parts, Casey's Auto Body, K1, just everyone that helps me out. I really appreciate it. Dylan Bloomfield finishing second tonight in tonight's Wingless Sprint Car main event. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Matt Streeter. How's it going? Good. Strong third place finish. Um, heck of a battle there at the end. You and Dylan Bloomfield side jobbing each other, lap, or once at the south end of the racetrack, then another one at the north end of the racetrack. And it, was, it was a good uh, job with him. He does a, he's a nice, smooth, clean racer. He's trying to get a little, if I get ahead of one restart, maybe it'll stay ahead of him, but that didn't work like that. But just hats off to him and hats off to the winner. It was a good show for everybody. That was one thing I saw you doing on the restarts. You were going down to turn number one and, and going real low trying to do a slide down on him. It just couldn't, couldn't get in front of him when you were doing that on the uh, initial, on the restarts. Yeah, I just wasn't timed him correctly. I'm a little rusty, but uh, at least we held on to finish. Uh, but just, if I timed a little better, it been, I could have executed a little better, but it's all part of getting some more laps. I want to just thank uh, the car and Ted, Keep in mind, for driving, and all my crew guys, Bobby and Brian and Vinny and Ed and everybody else, and my girlfriend's here to see, so good time. Matt Streeter, congratulations on a strong third place finish. Thank you. I appreciate you just putting the show on. It was a hell of a racetrack. All right, look forward to having you back. Thank you. And with that, let's swing on over here. Where's he at? Chad Chadwick. Let's get a, before we uh, sign off, let's get Chad here. Hey, Chad, can we get a word with you out here? Sign off. Let's get Chad here. Hey, Chad, can we get a word with you out here? Good to get Chad to come out where we get him on camera with the, up there in the stands. So, Chad, another successful night of racing here at Antioch Speedway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just, I just wish we could get some more sprint cars out here. I don't know what the deal is, why the sprint cars aren't showing up. I mean, we got a smooth track, we got an excellent racing surface, and I don't know. We'll figure it out, I guess. We'll get them out here. They see races like we had tonight. It will uh, definitely help that as well. What do you got coming up that you want to talk about? We got a big show coming up here in a couple yes, weeks. October uh, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, we have the Bill Bowers Memorial. The uh, A mods uh, pay 5000 to win. The Fort mods pay 2500 to win, and we're going to bring in stock cars. And uh, One Hour Grain is uh, putting up the sponsorship for that for uh, uh, the stock cars. It's going to pay a thousand to win each night. So the IMCA stock cars, something that we announced earlier this season that will be joining the uh, the track here next year for the 2021 season. We're going to make them uh, give them a debut early. Yeah, no, we are. We want. I want to try and get them out here, get get everyone uh, uh, familiar with them, and and I think it's going to be a really good class. IMCA is is excited about it, we're excited about it. I think it. Uh, I think it's gonna turn out to be a really good deal. And we still have lots of racing, and we're not even close to being done with this season yet. No, we do, we have, uh, we're gonna have a hobby stock open show. Uh, I'm not sure of the date. Uh, we're gonna have the, uh, the Tri-State, uh, the uh, Al Miller Memorial on uh, Halloween, the 31st of October. We're having a, a kids deal. Halloween also, where we're going to try and bring in some jumpies and paint, painting and, and stuff, and give out candy, since I don't think they're going to be able to go trick-or-treating. So we're, we're trying to do something here for them. And then, of course, we got the, uh, the week before that is when the, uh, the Hobby Stock Open is. Before that, we have a two-day show for the Delta Dwarf Cars. Yep, we're doing an open show for the Delta Dwarf Cars, and uh, we're doing uh, Thanksgiving 
the turkey race uh, Thanksgiving. I think we're going to have, uh, we're going to do 360 sprint cars and non-wing sprint cars and uh, hobbies on the first night and then we're going to do A mods, sport mods and hobbies on the second night. That's going to be Thanksgiving weekend, that's going to be a lot of fun. And then of course, uh, at the weekend after the big uh, Bill Bowers Memorial, we have the Larry, De uh, the Dinosaurs Larry Dements Hall of Fame night. Yes, we do. We have that also. So we, we got a lot of stuff still to, still ahead. A lot of stuff coming, and there's gonna next year is gonna be hopefully bigger and a lot better. And fans in the stands and next fans year. Fans in the stands because I, I don't think that's happening this year. Chad Chadwick, thank you very much. You're putting on a great show here each and every week. This track has just been unbelievable lately. Thank you. Chad Chadwick, new promoter here. So that was some of the Victory Lane interviews for both the Delta Dwarf cars and the Wingless Sprint cars on Saturday night. Don't forget this upcoming Saturday night, September 19th, 2020 at Antioch Speedway. It is IMCA Championship Night. That's right, we're crowning champions in both the IMCA Modifieds and IMCA Sport Modifieds. The Jays Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks will join us as well. And the only place to see all the action is on Antioch Speedway TV. That's right, head on over to AntiochSpeedway.tv and sign up and subscribe. And you can see all the action flag to flag on Antioch Speedway TV. For the complete video of Wednesday night's open practice at Antioch Speedway, check out Antioch Speedway by promotions at AntiochSpeedway.tv on Facebook. Had a lot of fun out there on Wednesday night during that practice session. Hope you got to watch it as we uh, broadcast on Facebook Live. And that's going to do it for this episode of Wiley's Race Report. Don't forget this weekend we have the IMCA Modifieds, IMCA Sport Modifieds, both crowning their champion for the 2020 season, Jay's Mobile Welding. Hobby Stocks will be in action as well. You can see all the action on Antioch Speedway TV. That's right. Go on over to AntiochSpeedway.tv and subscribe for this weekend's racing live and direct from Antioch Speedway. Until next time, I'm Wiley Wade. Good night, everybody. So that was some of the Victory Lane interviews for the Delph... In three, and two, again, three, two. That's a current episode of Wiley's Race Report. You can see the video of it. Head on over to Antioch Speedway Announcer. Um, also on Antioch Speedway by Promotions and AntiochSpeedway.tv, all on Facebook. Antioch Speedway Announcer also over on uh, YouTube as well. And they are still doing some track prep and stuff. So until we are ready to go live, let's uh, jump in on what we did earlier today on Facebook Live. This will uh, start happening every week. We're going to have a live pre-race show from the pits on Facebook um, on Antioch Speedway Bar Promotions and here is at least part of today's show. Antioch Speedway. We are down in the pits getting ready for racing action live and direct from Antioch Speedway tonight. It is IMCA Championship Night. Check, make sure the sound's coming through. And sitting down here with me, got two of the gentlemen. Uh, you can hear better if you put them on, yeah. I can't. Trevor probably needs him because he can't hear so well. You gotta hear him. So that voice you hear in the background, let me switch the camera around here. That is our championship points leader for the IMCA Sport Modifieds, Mark Garner. Mark, coming in.
as we get set for racing, I was going to show you, uh, play that show for you, but uh, technology woes. We're still working on that. We are going to start having uh, the ability, uh, hopefully as of next week, to show videos. But uh, tonight, I'll tell you what, some great racing action, as has been the year, um, Joe. It has been, man, this track each week, it just gets better from week to week, and the racing just keeps getting better. And just having some fun. Buddy Niss taking home the win tonight in the uh, IMCA Modifieds along with Tricky Troy Folger. Folger, of course, came in tonight as the points leader for the Modifieds. In the uh, Sport Modifieds, of course, uh, Mark Garner came in as a points leader. Only three over Trevor Clemens. Our Heat Winners guy, Allwort, Scott Saval, and Tommy Clemens Jr. taking home the wins for the Heat Races for the IMCA Sport Modifieds. Um, 33 entries tonight for the Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks with Chris Bennett taking home the win in the number six car of heat race number one. Number two was Aiden Ponciano in the 225 taking home his w heat win. The third heat race, he heat race win, Devin Vaughn in the 16V out of Antioch, California. Fourth heat race, Jason Robles out of Rio Vista got off the water truck, the grader, and all the other toys he plays with around here. Hops in the race car and takes home the win. And James Thompson. Uh, four behind our points leader, Trevor Dutra, or uh, Trevor, Travis Dutra, but Dutra not racing the hobby stocks anymore. anymore. So Thompson, the quasi uh, points leader, will take over that points lead tonight. He, he won the fifth heat race, but I think more importantly, he had a 12-point lead over um, the squirrel, Bree Trellin. Yeah, and um, looking, looking in. She in, blew up. Yeah, looking in the pits when I went back there. Um, just a just a few moments ago, as um, everybody was practically um, working on her car, trying to obviously, um, like they say, the racing community is uh, is family for sure, and just trying to get her car, um, I would say somewhat somewhat salvageable, to um, hopefully um, make it out here for the main event. So that car for the last, I don't know what five six laps of the uh, the B main she was in was. Not sure how she could even see. Um, there was so much smoke coming out of that race car. Yeah, it was um, it was puffing a lot. I I, I for surely thought possibly that um, I thought it was gonna blow when I seen the smoke down the back straightaway. But she, um, the car's a trooper. She's a trooper, and it held on for sure. So Bree Tron, the squirrel, twelve points behind coming into tonight, uh, really wanting to get a championship. Um, they're still debating exactly what they're going to do with her next year. They do have a meat mod sitting in the uh, driveway. Um, depending on who you ask on what she's going to race, she really wants that championship. And if he doesn't win, um, her idea, I think, is to come back and try to win it in the hobby stocks. But uh, possibly she will be heading to uh, the BMOT ranks um, come next year. James Thompson, he is looking to win that championship as well, and he's kind of debating on what he's going to do for next year, depending on how this all works out. Yeah, I, really, I haven't really heard too much news on um, where, his, um, where his eyes are lying at. I know that, um, man, he's, he's, not, he's trying to clock off a lot of wins for Shirley and uh, possibly, uh, you know, might grab the championship. Yep, he's got a good shot at it uh, running well and coming into tonight 12 points ahead. Got a win, so that gave him a couple extra points, and he for sure is in the main event. Not sure if the squirrel is going to make it. Um, with that, ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Gentlemen, take off your hats if you're a member of the military or former member of the military. Thank you very much for your service to your country. If you're a first responder, thank you for your service to your community. With that, we're going to bring back out Deborah Benson. Talked about her earlier tonight, part of the DNF crew. She recorded this version of the Star Spangled Banner last year. Here is our very own Deborah Benson. Oh, say can Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs burn. 
Deborah Benson from the DNF crew with her rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Thank you very much, Deborah. Um, we are looking for if uh, anybody out there wants to provide a a rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Let me know. Um, we're always open to that. Um, back when we get to or when we finally get some fans in the stands, we'd love to have some live renditions as well. One of these days, I'll break mine out as well. But uh, we're getting ready to go main event racing here tonight from Antioch Speedway, live and direct on Antioch Speedway TV. Thanks for tuning in. Um, next Saturday night, we are going to go back to racing, of course, each and every Saturday night. We race, and you can tune in only and see all the action only on Antioch Speedway TV. Next Saturday is the Super Stocks, um, Tri-State Pro Stocks, the wingless sprint cars are going to be here for racing action. BCRA Midgets are going to be here next week, along with the hard tops. Always fun to watch the hard tops. Yeah, I don't, we haven't had them out, I don't believe, this year at all. So um, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to, to see them. So getting set to the Hobby Stock main event coming up first, of course. Um, and then IMCA Championship Night. We'll be hitting the streets for racing action here at Antioch Speedway. Rich heading up the stairs. That means it is almost time to go racing. All right, heat race, uh, or excuse me, main event, getting ready to go. We're going to have 21 cars roll off for the hobby stocks. So as they get ready to roll them off, here we go. Starting lineup looks like this for the Hobby Stocks at the back of the pack. At the back of the pack, it's the 47 car. Out of Brentwood, California, Lucky Dog Racing, Flat Tire Racing, Big Sky Investments, the 47 of Gavin Griffiths. Outside row number 10, the 29 car out of Brentwood, California. With Benton Brothers Construction East-West Renewables, it's the 29 of Jake Bettencourt. And the inside of row 10 in the 19th starting spot out of Antioch, Antioch, California, excuse me, with Brentwood Auto Parts, Paws Automotive Service, Ryland Racing, DeCarlo Racing Products, Browntown Motorsports, Delta Graphics, Bob Newberry, Mom, Dad, and Scott. Uh, it is a 97 of the Squirrel Bree Troen. And in your ninth row, and the outside, in the number 45, that's going to be Gene Haney in the Big Investment Sponsored. And to his inside, it's going to be the 72 of Mitch Enos, of Mitch Enos out of Manteca in the Van Hoosier Enterprises, Man Mandoras Transport, Joe Blade Enterprises, 72 machine. And the outside of the eighth, uh, eighth row in that 16th starting spot. It's the 11A out of Oakley, California. Charlie Bryant to his inside. It is the 16 car of Rocky. Adam Kahala, square level plum out of Concord. Lucky Dog Racing League and DeCarlo's Auto Repair. It is the 16 of Rocky Kahala. And in your seventh row in the 44G out of Antioch, California. And the Freedom Alarm All Bay Answering Services. That's going to be James Grazley. And the 44G into his inside. The 32 out of Antioch, California, and the Norms Auto Machine Quick Stop Gas Station. JNS Auto Glass, Honorable Roddick Solutions, Hagen's Manufacturing 32 of Ken Johns out of Antioch, California. 
In the uh, outside of row six, the 46 car is that car out of Brentwood. Lucky Dog Racing, Flat Tire Racing, Big Sky Investment 46 of Colton Haney. To his inside, the 911, that's Dexter Long in the uh, Nova, 1975 Nova. And in the fifth row, the number six out of Antioch, California, in the Pacific Building Incorporated, McKay's Pool Cleaning, that's going to be Chris Bennett. And to his inside, out of Oakley, California, in the 225, uh, at, uh, Jerry Frazier, yeah, Jerry Frazier, Frazier assisted. It's going to be Aiden Ponciano. And in in outside of row number four in that eighth starting spot, the 16V out of winter of heat race number three out of Antioch, California, Devin Vaughn to his inside, the 78 car out of Rio Vista, California, with Favorlo Trucking, Mabadere Child Care, heat race number four winner, Jason Robles. And in the third row to the outside of the 18T, our points leader, the Hot Shots Motorsports, Big D's Garage Doors, Chad Hammer Racing Engines, the 18T of James Thompson. And to his inside in the 13 is going to be out of San Pablo, California. That's going to be Bobby Mox in the 13 in the M MF Trucking, Mr. Bill's Race Cars, Sunhaven Builders 13 Machine. In the fourth starting spot out of Antioch, California, Hot Shots Motorsports Photography, Gonderman Racing 20 car of Josh Leach. To his inside is the 28 car out of Merced, California, sponsored by his wife of Chase Awe. And your front row starting on the outside out of Brentwood, California, is going to be in the Brentwood's Brothers construction. It's going to be Jeff Bentoncourt. And on the pole on the, the, in the 47 out of Antioch, California, in the LB vinyl is going to be Angelica Brown in the 47X. That is your That's your starting lineup for the Hobby Stock. Jay's Mobile Welling Hobby Stock main event. 25 laps is the main event here tonight. 33 cars showed up. 21 make the main event. We're going racing right here and right now. Coming around to the green flag this time by. As they get set Green flags out for a 25 lap hobby stock main event. As it's gonna be Jeff Bencourt jumps out to the early lead, but here comes Leach shooting out from his fourth place starting position to second. James Thompson in third. Chase all slides all the way up the racetrack, and he's gonna take that fourth place position as they stack up in the center. We got an accident back in turn number four. The squirrel did make it out, whatever issue there was. They did make that to fix it up. The 46 car was involved back there. There's Colton Haney was involved. Uh, 47 of Gavin Griffiths was involved. The 45 of John Haney was involved. All the Haney's did, uh, uh, did not make it because uh, Gene Haney did not make it in the 44. As Josh Leach now wants to get racing with Ben Cordy, he's tapping on that back bumper saying, hey, bud, I'm here. I need to make this pass. As well as James Thompson, our points leader. Looking to make some moves. The top five. Oh, as Chase Aw slides up the racetrack, and, and he's gonna spin, spin it out. Right in front of Aiden Ponciano. Ponciano somehow avoids it. And yellow yeah. flag's gonna come out. As he was all the way up there on that wall. Looks like uh, Aiden Ponci him and Aiden Ponciano were gonna go head on for a second. Somehow, Ponciano able to avoid him as he spun down out of the way, thankfully. As we'll get them lined up, we'll get them straightened up. A beautiful night for racing here at Antioch Speedway. Thanks for tuning in. We do appreciate it on Antioch Speedway TV. Look forward to... Uh, having you back each and every Saturday night here at Antioch. As we have three laps down, 22 laps to go. Jeff Bencourt holding on to the lead with Josh Leach, James Thompson, Robles, Lineup is now set. Jason Robles in that fourth place position as he started 
in the seventh place position. So him advancing three spots. Got the uh, little damage coming off the back of Chris, ben, uh, Chris Bennett's car. Uh, sheet metal, and you do see smoke coming out of that, but that's okay. That's the way that car runs. Texas style restart here at Antioch Speedway. So on the point, the 48 car of Jeff Bencourt. Um, James Thompson has control or has a choice between inside and outside being in the second place car. I'm sorry, Josh Leach does. Josh takes the high side, puts James Thompson down on the low side. Row number three on the inside. It is the uh, Chase All or that the Chase All car and Jason Robles. No, it can't be Chase All, or is it? I can't see the number. No, that's not Chase All. Aiden Ponciano. Yes. Aiden Ponciano. Okay. That number's that far away. I can't see it. Um, Jason Robles was outside, inside. Chris Bennett. And to his outside is Dexter Long in the 911. That'll be row four. Row five is Ken Johns. Angela Brown. Row six is the uh, 16 of uh, Rocky Kahala. And 13 of Bobby Mox. Coming around to the green flag this time, Bob. Green flag's going to drop for Benton Court. Thompson inside. Leach on the outside. He's still going to hold on to that lead. Here comes Jason Robles. Making a move for a third place position as he is going to get by Leach and Thompson down the front straightaway as he sets his eyes on Jeff Bencourt now. Robles is rolling. Josh Leach dives into turn number three, almost into the rear end of Robles, but Robles gets underneath. Bettencourt and picks up the lead at the line. 78 car on the point. Jeff Bettencourt second. James Thompson into third spot. Fourth. Oh, Chris Bennett spins in turn number two. Gets or collects Chris uh, Dexter Long. They straighten each other out and keep on going. Meanwhile, up front, it's Robles, but a battle for second as James Thompson trying to get around Bettencourt. They get together up off turn number four. They're now turned on the exit of turn number two. Thompson looks to the inside. Down the back straight away into turn number three. Bettencourt on the high side. Thompson on the low side. Battle for second. Thompson gets loose that time. Coming up off turn number four. As Robles now runs away with the lead over Bettencourt as we have a car stopped in the infield. That's the 46 of Colton Haney. Looks like his night's done for done. It looks like he's done for the night. As fast as Charlie Bryant was, he's first car a lap down now. Robles, uh, Bryant runs off. Just about hits the wall on pit exit. As well as the, the 225 of Aiden Ponciano pulls it into the infill as well. Oh, right in front of the leaders. One car going the wrong way. The 28 of Chase off. Barely gets Jason Robles by him. Battle for second continues off turn number four. Down into turn number one. Action all the way around this racetrack. Thompson now gets the advantage over Bettencourt. Gets that second spot down the back straightaway. Thompson. Into turn number three, he sets his sights on now trying to chase down that 78 car of Jason Robles. He's got a long ways to go. Yeah, for sure. And now it looks like Leach and Ben Court side by side. It looks like Ben Court's still going to hold on to that third place position over Josh Leach. But Robles is just continually, continually to knock off these lap cars as it looks like he's going to put the 45 of Gene Haney a lap, or trying to put the 45 of Gene Haney a lap down. Robles in heavy, heavy traffic right now, but he's got a big enough lead. He's going into turn one. Thompson coming up off turn number four. He's got a full straightaway lead. Robles on the inside of Gene Haney. They almost touch. Haney, as we talked about earlier, likes to run that low line. And one car throwing up through the infield. She keeps on going, but she's in danger of going a lap down as Thompson is in the second spot right now. That 97 car somehow able to get it fixed and get back out here. But uh, not where she wants to be. Chris oh, Bennett. Chris Bennett is slowed in the center of turns. Now coming out of turn four. Robles not trying to get the set 47 of Gavin Griffiths a lap down. He's only three cars behind the squirrel breach row, and she's hoping for a yellow flag. Smoke coming out of the Ken Johns car. Bennett pulls off the racetrack. 
as we keep, as we stay green, Robles. Robles now in the rear bumper of the squirrel, Breeze throwing. He's trying to get uh, put the 29 of Jake Benford to lap down. He splits Benford and the, the squirrel and puts both those cars a lap down. Like I said, I think in the heat race, Jason Robles was testing something to see how when this track starts to dry out and winds out the way he the way he was driving in his heat. And now look at him, he is run, he is running away from um, our second place car of James Thompson. Not only is he running away, he just went through all that heavy traffic and actually got a bigger spread between him and Thompson. Thompson's in the open and he's still faster. That 78 car is on a rail tonight. Yeah. Robles now entering turn number three. Thompson halfway through turn one and two. As, as fast as our, our B main winner, uh, Mitch Enos, I'm surprised to see him in the battling in the middle of the pack. Jason Robles give you a rundown here. Oh, one car goes around Gene Haney on the front straight away. Man, had some help. Yellow flag is out. Luckily, he was missed by the rest of the field. Not what Robles wanted to see, but absolutely what, what Jake, Thompson yes, wanted to see. Yes, for sure. That last lap, listen to this, this is the Hobby Stock Race. Last lap, 17.23 on the stopwatch. 78.352 miles an hour. That They're is getting after flying. I see some uh, fluid down on the racetrack that they're going through right now, down in the front straightaway. Jason Robles is your leader. Second is James Thompson in the 18 car. Third is the uh, 13, Bobby Motts. Fourth, the 72 of Enos. And fifth, the 20 car of Josh Leach. Enos working his way up after starting back in the uh, inside of the ninth row, 17th. He's worked his way all the way up to the four spot so far. Under the yellow flag with nine laps remaining. Cars on the infield right now, the 16V of uh, Devin Vaughn, winner of Heat Race 3. So that means that J.C. Robles is going to be out in clean air, but also is James Thompson now, is as he's going to not have to go through the lap traffic that Robles had to endure. So let's see if he can let's see if he can give him a battle. We have nine laps left. Um, like I say, anything can happen. As also, what comes to mind is as these main events start. We forgot to do our picks. All right. Um, who picked first last time? I think it was I me. I picked correctly two times, two left, two races. Uh, you picked first last time, so I get to pick first this time. Is that the deal? Well, I can't go wrong with Jason Robles. Well, uh, even if I wanted to pick him, I can't. So, you know what? That 72 car, I'm going to go with the 72 of Mitch, Mitch Enos. Enos. Our B main, B main winner. And he was he was stellar in his B main. So, he hey, was. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the uh, 72 car. He's got a little motivation being I got DQ'd last time. He wants to show For, that he, yeah, can, he can win yeah. with a uh, legal car. Jason Robles on the point. James Thompson chooses the high side, put Bobby Mons down on the low side. Row two checks the style restart. Row three is that Mitch Eno's car, and outside of him is Josh Leach. Row four is the 48 of uh, Jeff Bentoncourt to his outside, the 44G of uh, James Gracely. Here we go, green flag in the air. Thompson let Robles get away. He did not get a good start that time, coming up on turn number four. Robles still shoots out to the lead. Side by side, Mots. Thompson. Who's going to get that second? Oh, as Mots slices up the racetrack. He went into turn three a little hard, and that car did not stick. I think he's trying to drive that car like that's his, his A mod and throw it in there deep. But here comes Mitch Enos. He's already gotten around the Josh Leach car. Now he's on the inside of the 13. Three wide coming up off turn number four for that battle for third spot. But now the 13 and the 72 get together and come down the front straightaway. Mitch Enos, slight advantage coming up off turn number two. He's setting his sights on completing that pass down into turn number three. I think they touch again going down the back straightaway. Yeah, as they touch twice going down the back straightaway still. Mitch Enos holds on to the third place position. 
and he's going to secure it. They're oh, still as Mott. They're and banging. Bobby Mott's running into the back of the Mitch Enos. Mott's. Maybe unhappy. Damage on that front end. Maybe unhappy with the, the little bump down the back straight, but he nevertheless, Mitch Enos holds on to or takes that third place position. Now he sets his sights on James Thompson for second. James Robles up on the board. Oh, as Josh Leach gets into the backstretch wall. As him and Bobby Motts make contact, it turns him into the backstretch wall. Bobby Motts going to get the black flag for rough driving. Bobby Motts putting Josh Leach into the backstretch wall from what we're hearing over the radio. All right, so this puts puts them back together. Robles, Thompson, and there's that 72 up in that third spot. He's going to be on the road right behind the leader. The 72, uh, I believe, is your so far your biggest mover in this race as he started in the 17th position. Yeah, 17th position, and now he's sitting in third. Mark Charger, yeah. Yeah. Last lap is 70, or 17.10 seconds, 78.947 miles an hour. So Thompson last time is kind of asleep at the wheel um, on the last restart. He got a late start compared to what Robles did. He's going to have to get it a little closer stay with him. He's going to have Enos down on the inside, and that car we already know is fast as well. Yeah, if you guys remember, James Thompson last week actually was in a sprint car for the first time, and now he's back in, uh, back in his regular ways of sitting in this hobby stock. Seeing if this time possibly he can, uh, if he has anything for Jason Robles and can take the, take the W tonight. Uh, fluid underneath that Josh Leach car, so on getting that uh, thing on the hook. You have to have the field go through the uh, infield there on the back straightaway. Real quick, uh, don't forget, coming up. Next Saturday, Tommy Thompson tribute. Can't believe it's the end of September already. Super Stocks try to try to say Pro Stocks, wingless spread cars. BCRA Midgets had some of them out here on Wednesday night for the practice session there fun to watch. The hard tops will be here for the Tommy Thompson Tribute. Um, we're in the season of big shows. Then we have the Bill Bowers Memorial. Practice night on October 1st, Thursday night. The IMCA Modified, Sport Modified, and Stock Cars. Um, the only ones allowed to practice. It is not an open practice. Just for those three divisions that are racing for the weekend. On night one for the Bill Bowers on October 2nd. And night two on for the Bill Bowers on October 3rd. The third will pay out the IMCA Modified 5,000 to win, 2,500 to win for the Sport Mods. IMCA Stock Cars are running for 1,000 to win both nights. Then on the following Saturday, October 10th, the Donosauris and Larry DeMintz Memorial um, and Hall of Fame night. Again, there's going to be a Hall of Fame activity. Um, some stuff's getting put together. It will not be... Uh, a Hall of Fame induction ceremony, being we can't have fans, but uh, we're always going to be a Hall of Fame something there. Then on the 16th and 17th of October, it's a two-day show for the Dwarf Car Open, show night one and two. And on the 17th is a championship night for the Wingless Sprint Cars. Hobby Stock Open show on October 24th. Hobby Stocks and the Super Stocks will be here on that night. On the 31st, it's Halloween night. Candy for the kids. IMC Modifieds or IMC Sport Mods, Super Stocks, and the Wingless Sprint Cars on October 31st. Candy for the kids. We're going to have bouncy houses, uh, candy, and some other fun stuff on uh, that night. Then we take three weeks off before we go turkey night. And that's right, three, uh, Friday night, the, the day after Thanksgiving, after you wake up from sleeping, from eating all that turkey, and after you go shopping in that morning, come out and uh, turn on... Antioch Speedway TV and watch the hobby stocks, the wingless sprint cars, and the wing sprint cars. On Saturday, the 28th of November, it'll be the IMCA Modifieds, IMCA Sport Modifieds, and the Jays Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks 
to finish out the 2020 season. For such a crazy year, it's been nice to go racing, but I'll tell you what, I miss having fans in the stands. Yeah, uh, hopefully soon, hopefully soon. Magic green flag in the air means one to go. Go back to green flag racing. Three laps to go for this hobby stock feature event. Jason Robles on the point. James Thompson second. Dimitino's third. Fourth is Jeff Betancourt. Fifth is the Ken Johns car. Sixth is Dexter Long. Seventh is Devin Vaughn. Or no, I'm sorry, that's the other 16 car of uh, Rocky Kojala. Four laps remain. Just heard officially. Coming around, Jason Robles gets on it early. Jason Robles, and it looks like Mitch Enos is going to steal away that second place position. And here he comes. He sets his sights on Jason Robles. Mitch Enos comes from the 17th starting spot. And he's going to have second across the line. Can he get the win from the B main? Coming from the B main. Jason Robles, Mitch Enos, James Thompson coming up. Two to go this time by. I don't think they're going to be close enough to Jason Robles, but Jason, uh, Mitch Enos is sure is trying as James Thompson trying to get around Mitch Enos for that second spot. White flag coming out this time. Thompson drives in deep into turn number three on the high side. Up off turn number four to line white flag. Mitch Enos second, James Thompson third. Battle is for fourth, but right now the leader coming up off turn number two. Robles down the back straight. I don't think Mitch Enos is going to have anything for him. Coming through three out of four. Your feature event winner, Jason Robles. In second is going to be Mitch Enos. Third is going to go to James Thompson. And fourth is going to go to Adam Kajala. And top five is the 32 of Ken Johns. Your unofficial top five. Last lap is 16, 96, 79.599 miles an hour. Want to do it? You can go ahead, huh? go ahead Waiting for Jason to come around. What a main event for the Hobby Stocks. Putting on a great show once again. Mitch Enos coming from 17th to se uh, second place. Jason Robles probably has more laps around this racetrack than anybody so far this year. Getting congratulations from James Thompson and Rocky Kahala, Kajala, excuse me, taking off the helmet. Climbing out. There he is, Jason Robles climbing out. Right on. Jason, man, this car was on a rail. Yeah, we finally fixed the popping. Good day for it. It's my small kid's birthday. 
I can give him one of these doors that we've been wanting. So you, you, at one point earlier in the race, you are going through extremely heavy traffic. Yes. And have to put them a lap down. And you were so fast, you were still pulling away from second place, James Thompson. That's, that's good to hear. I'm glad we found that popping and the clean race. And I'd like to thank everybody that preps this track. I was going to say, you have more laps around this place in 2020 than anyone else, being you uh, do all the water trucks and the grader and everything else that you do around here. Yes, sir. I can't do it without my help either. So I appreciate everything. The promoter letting us race. It's all good. Who do you want to say thanks to uh, for helping you get out here? Everybody. The Mott's family, Kaufman Racing, my brother, my niece, my sons, most definitely my wife, Mama's Bear Daycare. Jason Robles, winner of tonight's Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stock Main Event. Here comes the little band, and congratulations, Jason. Here's the birthday boy now. Hi, what's your name? Kaden. And it's your, your birthday? Yeah. How old are you? Nine. Nine? So you're telling Dad, hurry up, uh, in about three years I'm going to take over your driving seat? Yeah. All right, good job. Happy birthday. That's going to do it for the Hobby Stock portion of the night. Coming up next. We're going IMCA racing championship night here at Antioch Speedway for both the IMCA Modifieds and IMCA Sport Modifieds. Who's going to take home the championships? We'll find out. Starting lineup for the IMCA Modifieds. Tricky Troy Folger, point leader, coming in tonight. On the back of the pack. 11th starting spot out of Madeira. It is the 1X of Steven Streeter. Inside or outside, row number 5 in that 10th starting spot, the 61 car. Ricky Thatcher with Thatcher Performance Technologies out of Mariposa. John Pierce out of San Jose in the 80 car starts ninth with the Hillbilly Racing Monster Machine. And in your fourth row, and outside, that's going to be 2JD of uh, Jake Dewsbury and the Extreme Racing Products, DiCarlo Racing Products, Absolute Heating and Air Conditioner, 2JD. And to his inside, our points leader for the A-Mods here at Antioch in the 49 out of Oakley, California, uh, in the Southern Countries Lubricated All-Flow Mufflers and Auto Repair, Tricky Troy Folger. In that sixth starting spot, out of Prunedale, California, it is a six car JB Auto Recyclers, Water Tech sponsored six car of Jim Pettit. In the inside, in that fifth starting spot, out of Oakley, California, it is the Pro Motorsports Antioch Muffler sponsored 83 car of Kellen Chadwick. And your second row to the outside is going to be the 09 uh, of Sean DeForest of the All Pro Coding JGE Mopar Racing. 097 of uh, Sean DeForest and to his inside the 03 out of Vacaville in the Hot Shots Motorsports Photography Vacaville Masonary of uh, Kimo Aretta. On your front row, the 2019 champion with Delta Transmission, Rebella Racing, and Alter Camper sponsorship on the 19K. It is Buddy Niss on the points. Out of Oakley, California, Delta Transmission, Justin Scott Foster, sponsored 228. That's Jeff Brown. That's your starting lineup. For tonight's IMCA 25 lap main event for the Modifieds. Championship to be decided. It's going to be hard for Jim Pettit to catch Tricky Troy here tonight. So Troy may get his, I believe, fifth championship here at Antioch Speedway. A former champion, uh, 2010, 2011, 2012, and 2013 uh, for Tricky Troy Folger. As well as his uh, last year's Merced Speedway Track Championship to add to his uh, collection. So, uh, what's your pick? I am going or, to go. I, isn't it my turn this time, It's right? your turn to pick first, yes. Okay. Um, 
Why not take him? The 49. Tricky Troy. That's your pick. All right, you want? I'm going to go. Well, he's in a backup car. Think about Jim Pettit. Can't go wrong there. Kellen Chadwick. Um, I got to make it in my mind. We've got a half lap before we go green flag racing. I am going to go with Kellen Chadwick, the 83 car. All right, my pick's Folger. Wiley's pick is Chadwick. Let's see who gets it. Green flag drops on your modified main event. We're going to have to start doing a little thing on Facebook and have everybody send in their picks. Coming but, off third number two down the back straight away. Look at uh, Buddy Ness out on the point. Jim Pettit in the Oh, Brown spins right in front of Chadwick. That's not what I needed to see. But look at Jim Pettit, that car right there. Run on the rear bumper of Buddy Niss into turn number three. Buddy Niss on the point. Pettit slumps up the hill. Something happened. That car almost hit the fence. It does hit the fence yeah. slightly on the edge of the fence. Third is Keith Moretta, the old three car. Fourth, Thatcher. Fifth, here comes Kellen Chadwick up to fifth. Or in fifth. Right behind him is our points leader, Troy Folgers. He looks to the inside. He's going to try to make a move on Kellen Chadwick. Kellen Chadwick shuts the door. Points leader, three wide, coming up on turn number two. Folger down on the low side. Kellen Chadwick was in the middle. Thatcher was on the high side. Thatcher has got a little problem. He loses the bunch of car bikes. Chadwick up to the four spot. Our best battle on the track right now is Chadwick and Folger. But in the lead is a Buddy Niss. Looks like Jim Pettit is closing on the number 19K as Niss closes in on the 228 of lap traffic. Battle of Jeff Brown. Battle third. Chadwick gets around Keith Moretta. Put him up to the third spot. Bolter now trying to get there, get around as well. Buddy Niss having the best run of the season so far here at Antioch Speedway. Holding off Jim Bennett still. Going down the back stretch. Jeff now continues into turn number three. Buddy Niss has got a slower car in front of him. That is the uh, Steven Streeter car. But he put it down on his inside. But he missed it a mistake. Turn four allows Jim Pettit. Jim Pettit looks, but he doesn't touch. As he throws it in aggressively one more time, is there on the lap car of Steven Streeter. Streeter gets out of the way, or may have had a little help on that. But he did. Jim Pettit battle for the lead into turn one and two. Pettit on the inside. But he did on the high side. Yes, a little better run up off the turn, but here comes Bennett down on the low side once again. He gets oh. sideways, loops it in front of the rest of the field. And it looks like that's going to bring on our first out. caution. Jim Pettit, that thing just kind of dug in on the right rear, lifted up that left front, and then that just kind of forced the thing around. Yeah, Buddy Niss was able to pinch him down on the inside, allowing him to not slide him or make any kind of aggressive move, and Jim Pettit uh, looped it around right there in uh, turn four. Buddy Niss liking that new race car, I'd say. Getting the lineup set. Pettit rolling once again. I believe that's gonna allow the 83 of Kellen Chadwick to sit in the second place position with our points leader, Tricky Troy Folger, in third, Kimo Arreta fourth, Ricky Thratcher fifth, the two JD of Jake Dewsbury in sixth, and sixth. Lights out going green flag racing, so it's Bunny Niss on the point. Chadwick, Folger, Arreta, Thatcher. Top five, green flag back in the air. Green flags out in the air for Buddy Niss. It's all ready. If they're trying to dive bomb the 19 as Folger, he looks on the inside of Kellen Chowick and Buddy Niss at the same time. He's going to go from third to, it looks like, possibly first at the line. Yes, Troy Folger is going to have the lead across the line. Buddy Niss give him a little love tap in the rear end, but Troy Folger is going to take that lead. Now Chadwick gets into the rear bumper of Buddy Niss just a little bit down the back straightaway. Chadwick underneath him at the line. Chadwick up to second. Top two. Well, one car goes around. Jake Dewsbury. He gets a roll and we stand under the green flag. Folger. Kellen Chadwick. Buddy Niss. 
Thatcher, Moretta, Pettit. That's your top six. For about 13 laps remain in this 25 lap main event for the IMTA Modifieds and the Modified Championship for 2020. As Folger leaves it coming around, turn four. Kellen Chadwick stock in the rear end. As this is how they finished in their heat race one and two. Folger above turn number four. Chadwick has trouble in the middle of three and four. He runs up the hill, loses about another three car lengths. Thatcher has trouble, but he is still there in that third spot. Fifth, Pettit is up to fifth. He got around Kimo Arata in the 03 car. Troy Ford is gonna come up on some lap, on some lap traffic of Jake Dewsbury as he's starting to run away from the 83 of Kellen Chadwick as Dewsbury goes around and he takes off the cone and it looks like he's going to come to a stop. He's got a big old tire in front of him. He doesn't realize that uh, the start tire is underneath the front end. Now it's underneath the center of the car. Yellow flag is out due to that. Yellow flag is out as the number two. That's going to make the car feel weird, having that big old tire underneath it. That tire on the front straightaway now. Thanks for tuning in to Antioch Speedway TV. Live and direct from Antioch Speedway here in Antioch, California. If you're not familiar with the area, we are about 40 miles outside of San Francisco to the northeast. It's a 3 8 mile semi-high bank oval dirt track here in Antioch, California. All right, Tricky Troy Folger on the point. Kellen Chadwick second. He chooses the low side. Puts Buddy Niss on the high side. Thatcher. Ricky Thatcher down on the low side of row three to his outside. Jim Pettit, row four. Kimo Aretta. Inside and outside is John Pierce. Row five, it's the 228 of Jeff Brown. To his outside will be Jake Dewsbury. And at the back of the pack, the 1X of Steven Streeter. Lights out, going green flag racing this next time by. Nine laps to go. Can Troy Folger hold on for the win and secure a win and a championship in the same night? Let's find out. As they set, green flag drops for the 49. The 83 shoots back out into second place. Here comes Buddy Niss on the outside as he runs the cushion. He hops the cushion a little bit. Here comes the 61 of Ricky Thatcher in the inside of Niss. Oh! That's the 80 of Price. The 2JD of Dewsbury and the 1X of Steve Streeter. John Pierce. Dewsbury and Streeter all involved in turn number four. Not what Tricky Troy wanted to see. You want to get this green flag, just go. He wants to win this race. John Pierce looks like he's having trouble getting that thing rolling. May have problems, uh, damage in the rear end. Going to double them up. One more race tonight. We got the IMCA Sport Modifieds up next. We, for their championship, only three points separating Mark Garner and Trevor Clemens in the IMCA Sport Modifieds. Lights out. Tricky Troy has control of the field. Kellen Chadwick once again takes the low side, puts Buddy Niss on the high side. Ricky Thatcher, Jim Pettit in row three, coming around. Green flag back in the air. Tricky Troy up off turn number four. Down the front straightaway into turn number one. Kellen Chadwick clears Buddy Niss. Falls in line in that second spot. Now he sets his sights on trying to catch Tricky Troy once Folger again. with nine laps remain. Coming around eight to go this time. Jake Dewsbury spins again over in turn number two. Continues on to the the green flag. Chadwick looking low. Folger on the high side. Folger running that high side. One, two, and three. 
all running that same line up there on the top of that that cushion. Oh, it looks like Buddy Ness hops the cushion a bit. Now, Kellen Chadwick has a run on the 49 of Trick and Troy Folger down the back straightaway. Jake Dewsbury slower in front of him. He stays at the inside. Folger up off turn number four with about a car length and a half lead over Kellen Chadwick. Down into turn number one, Folger. Right behind Jake Dewsbury. He has to get out of the gas just a little bit, but Chadwick not close enough to make a move. Into turn number three. They both clear with Jake Dewsbury. Up off turn number four. Five laps remain. Five laps to go for Troy Folger. Let's see if he can hold off Kellen Chadwick. Kellen Chadwick looks like his nose is kind of folded a little bit. As Buddy Niss clears Dewsbury as well. Folger getting just a little bit of extra space there. Kellen Chadwick losing just a hair of ground. But the battle for third, three wide, four wide, coming up off turn number two. Jim Pettit down, oh, yellow flag is out. And turns one and two on the high side. They're up above the cushion. You see a bar or something up there. I think it's some sheet metal from Pettit's uh, rear end that flew off into the on the top side of the racetrack. Lineup is good, so Tricky Troy Folger on the point. Kellen Chadwick second. Uh, Buddy Niss third. Jim Pettit fourth. Fifth, Ricky Thatcher sixth. Uh, Timo Retta seventh. Jeff Brown eighth. Jake Dewsbury. Thanks for tuning in to Antioch Speedway TV. On Wiley Wade, he's Joe Peterson. Broadcasting live from atop the grandstands here at Antioch Speedway. Three laps remain in this 25-lap main event for the IMCA Modifieds. It is championship night. Forgot to say thanks to Tim earlier. Tim, cameraman Tim, thank you very much, sir. All right, as we're set, they get the one-to-go signal. Lights out. The 49 still out front. Can he hold them off? Three more laps. Where is Tricky Troy going to start this time? Green flag in the air. Green flag in the air for Troy Folger. He shoots out to the point. Oh! Chadwick dove down there hard, had to get on the brakes as he started to push up the hill big time into turn, uh, turn number one. Oh, Buddy Niss gets it to the rear of Chadwick. Chadwick, the IMCA panel hanging off on the back. Coming up off turn number two, but meanwhile, that's just letting Tricky Troy pull away. Half a straightaway right now down to turn number three. Two to go this time by. Who's going to win? Tricky Troy, championship point leader. Has got about a five car length advantage over Kellen Chadwick. Five car length, six car length. Chadwick's he's pulling having away. trouble in turns one and two. He's having a lot of trouble, but nevertheless, he's white flag comes out for a tricky Troy Folger one more time around, and he's going to secure the win and the championship. As he rolls down the back straightaway into turn three, coming out of four. Your 2020 Antioch Speedway Track Champion and your feature winner, Troy Folger. In Kel second. Chadwick, second, third, Buddy Niss, fourth, Jim Pettit. Fifth, Ricky Thatcher. Last lap, 15.33, 88.063 miles an hour. Head down for victory lane and championship ceremony. Championship night here at Antioch Speedway for the IMCA Modifieds and IMCA Sport Modifieds.
out of the car. Taking home the race win. Doing it the way he wants to. Getting the race win as well as the championship. Tricky Troy Folger. Now a, what, five-time champion here at Antioch Speedway in the modified division. Congratulations. Great run. I mean, you got, uh, once you got out in the lead, you were not able to be caught. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I just seen uh, Kellen there a couple times on the restart, and I knew, uh, with him behind me, you know, you just know you can't make mistakes. Uh, so I just tried to run 25 laps clean, and, uh, and we, we came through the, came through the field pretty decent, me and Kellen, and then, uh, we had that little restart there and it worked out good and uh, I just can't thank everybody that helps me out enough to uh, get this car out here every weekend. Billy and uh, Bowers, Evelyn, Wish Pops was here, uh, all flow muffler and auto repair, Margie, Southern County Lubricants, all flow muffler and auto repair, all spec sheet metal. Uh, thanks for the track crew working their butts off and giving us a good racetrack to race on every week. What was the hard part coming up through the field? You had a ways to come. Oh. And you know, you just got to be really patient back there, and the, the racetrack was really good. I mean, you could run the bottom, uh, but it started to just kind of get around the top there, and I was kind of worried because Kellen rolls the tires pretty good, so uh, I wasn't going to go down there and try it. Any close calls for you tonight? Uh, not too bad. It was pretty good racing, and everybody everybody ran really good, and, you know, uh, we just been tuning on the same. We've had a lot of bad luck. About turned it over last night, and... Broke a lot of stuff, and uh, we're just glad to be here tonight. All right, so you'll be back in two weeks for the Bill Bowers Memorial Race. What's that mean for you, being that uh, kind of your your deal here, or part of your team? Name? Uh, it's it'd be an unbelievable experience. Uh, he was a great man, and I love him a lot and miss him a lot. All right, let me say it right now: you you are the 2020. IMCA modified track champion at Antioch Speedway. Congratulations. Right on. Thank you. Like I said, I just, I can't thank Billy enough. He puts in a lot of hours on this thing and, you know, all my buddies come and help out too. And, you know, they mean the world to me and I wouldn't be out here without them. Tricky Troy Folger, winner of tonight's main event for the IMCA Modified and winner of the championship for the 2020 IMCA Modified cha uh, season. And he'll be back. We're not done racing with these guys here for this year. But congratulations. Right on. Thank you, Chad, and everybody that puts in work here and all you officials. And uh, just can't thank you guys enough, all the fans for watching at home. Wish you guys could be here. And just in case I don't get to see you, congratulations. I know you're getting married here in a couple months as well. Right on. Thank you. All right, Tricky Troy, congratulations. Thank, thank you to my fiance, too. I think I, she was the only one I left out. Whoops. <laughs> Good catch. All right, head on over here, see if we can get the... Uh... Jim Pettit. How you doing, sir? Uh, we're going to have to come a little closer, I think. Come on up here. Jim Pettit. Uh, you had a good run, and you were going for the, for the win, and then uh, something happened over there in turns three and four. Uh, we got in the traffic, and... Uh... I didn't want to get into Buddy, and I got down just a little bit too low and got in a slick stuff. I didn't realize it was as slick down there as it was and ended up spinning the car out. I'd rather do that than get into him or anybody else. So, I mean, we rallied back to the top five, you know. So, I mean, this is the first time running this car other than Speed Week, so I got to get a little bit of time to get used to it. Uh, it's definitely different than the car I normally run. So, uh, we'll work on this one like we do our other one, and we'll just keep plugging along. So did, you run this, did you run this one tonight to save the other one for next week's pennant race, or did you run this one tonight to prepare it for next week's pennant race, or you're not telling me? I'm running this one tonight because I didn't have enough time to fix that car from last <laughs> night to get here, so it was easier to put a motor in this one than it was to try to fix what happened last night. So I'll, I'll work on getting it ready for during the week, and we'll get it ready for, for next week at Watsonville, and then we'll have both cars. Congratulations. I want to say uh, congratulations. Uh, appreciate the fact that you came back this year running uh, for, the, for the season and supporting Antioch Speedway, finishing second in the points. 
You know, when I, when I set out at the beginning of the year, I mean, finishing second is it, 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 an honor. You know, um, always you'd like to be the champion, but Detroit will make a great champion. And uh, when we started off, we didn't really start off with the intent of running for points. We just decided to come and support Chad and, and Antioch because I spent a lot of nights here many, many weeks ago. <laughs> but, uh, no, a sec, it's not bad. We, 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 you know, it's a good class of cars we ran with, and the competition was good all year. Um, we just needed a little bit, uh, a little bit more luck on our side a couple of times. But we still ran good all year, so I'm happy with it. And, and uh, we'll continue on, and we'll see what next year brings. All right, Jim Pettit, uh, good luck next week at your, your event down there in Watsonville at the Pettit. Yeah, that, that's going to be quite an event. We're expecting a bunch of cars, and uh, hopefully it's a great event like we always try to make it to be. And, uh, and then we'll get through that one, and then we'll be back up here later in the year for your guys' event. You got the Bill Bauer in two weeks. Absolutely, so. the Bill Bauer after that. And, and uh, you know, my father-in-law drove for him for a lot of years, so I have a connection with him and, and the family. So it's a special event that we feel we need to be part of also. Jim Pettit. Uh, top five tonight, but second in points for the 2020 season. Congratulations. Thank you. That's going to do it for our IMCA modified events for tonight. Um, with that, we got one more race, one more event event, one more championship to give out. That's in the IMCA Sport Modifieds. We got a three point separation between the first place, Mark Garner, and second place, Trevor Clements. Who's going to take home the win? We're about to find out as we roll them out onto the racetrack. Once again, want to say congrats to the 49 of Tricky Troy Folger on his win and also on winning the 2020 track championship here at Antioch Speedway tonight. But we have another championship to settle in our sport mod division between our points leader, Mark Gardner in the 76. And right behind him, just three points behind him, the 2C of Trevor Clemens. All right, here we go. Starting lineup for the IMCA Sports Modified at the back of the pack in the 11th row. We got the 75 car. Out of Antioch, Brentwood Embroidery sponsored number 75 of Nicholas Zapatero. And the inside in that 21st starting spot, the 15P. Pro Motorsports sponsored the Kid Smooth, Andrew Pierce out of Oakley. And in your 10th start, or your 10th row, uh, to the outside is the 27 out of Antioch, California. That is going to be Cameron Swank. And the Whiskey Lane uh, in Martinez. And to his inside, it's going to be the kid out of Oakley, California. The kid, Jacob Mallet Jr. In your 18th starting spot on the outside of the ninth row on a series, California. It is Frankie Saifaiello to his inside. The 325 out of Oakley, California with Berg, uh, Bargains Custom Flooring to Tyler Brown. And your 16th starting spot in the 100 RY out of Oakley, California. That is going to be Todd Clemens. And to his inside, and the 22S out of Oakley, California, is going to be Scott Foster. Your 14th starting spot, it's the 82 car of Modesto, California. Joe Salvi, two is inside. Out of Mer Merced, California, the 33 feet, 33P of Gavin Espino with sponsorship from California Comfort. And in your, in your 12th starting spot out of Richmond, California, the 32... The, in the 32 is going to be Nick Kaufman and the Sun Valley Builders Mama Bear Daycare. And to his inside is going to be the 10, our 2019 state championship of Guy Allwart. And your top 10 looks like this in the 10th starting spot. Out of Pacheco, California, Demi Schrader and Cal York Construction sponsored 188, 188 of Kenny Schrader. In the ninth starting spot, out of Tracy, California, current right civil engineers and surveyors, it's Casey Keller. In our ninth starting, in our eighth starting spot, I'm sorry, out of Antioch, California, our 2019 Antioch Speedway track champion in the custom roof and tile specialist, it's the Iceman, Tommy Frazier. And to his inside, our points leader, 
looking to secure a championship tonight in the 76 out of Antioch, California. And then Sabrina's Pizza VFW post is going to be Mark Gardner. And his nemesis, uh, three points behind him, starting one position in front of him, the 2C of Trevor Clemens with the unique breeds, Clemens Motorsports Cart Supplies sponsorship in the fifth starting spot. The 112 out of Pittsburgh, California, select one realty. It's the ch uh, crash, Chuck Golden. And in your fourth starting spot, on the, starting on the outside, the 17B out of Oakley, California, the Bridgehead Cycles, uh, Bridgehead Cafe, uh, 17B of Kevin Brown. And to his inside is a 19C out of Oakley, California, and the unique breeds, Clymans Motorsports, Trevor's Junk, Clymans Racing Enterprises, Tommy Clymans Jr. Our front row looks like this on the point, on the outside of the front row. Out of Antioch, California, it's a 156 of Jacob Haas on the point. All the way from Sacramento, California. Charlie's Tractor Service in Auburn Golf Course. It's a 7X of Scott Saval. That's your starting lineup, 22 cars. 25 laps is the main event. Championship on the line for between Mark Garner and Trevor Clements. Who's going to take it? Who's your pick? We got a half a lap. Uh, the 10. He's going Guy Alwert. I am going to go with, oh man, oh wait, it was my turn. I was going to shoot. I was supposed to go first. Green flag in the air. I'm going to go. Green flag's in the air. See if we can uh, stay under the green. That was kind of a rough start. We do stay under the green. So I am going to go with Trevor Clements with the win. As lead lap number one is going to be Jacob Haas. Jacob Haas down to turn number one through turns one and two. The 7X of Scott Samal in the second spot. 17B. Kevin Brown in that third spot. Here comes Kenny Schrader and oh. Trevor Kleiman side by side. Battle for fourth up top for turn number four down the front stretch. That's who we want to keep an eye on is Trevor Kleiman's position and the 76 of Mark Gardner. Is he, he's just one position ahead of Mark Gardner Kearney right now as Tommy, as Tommy Frazier, the Iceman, Making a move down the inside of the 2C. The Iceman, nah, he's not going to be able to get it done. Right now, Mark Garner and Trevor Climans have three cars between them. That gives the championship to Trevor Climans. Mark's got to make up some ground. Trevor Climans, Trevor Climans kind of scoops away from the Iceman as of right now. Our leader down in the turn number three, that has Haas. He's Jacob. coming up on Zapatero, who just is not handling well in that 75 car. He gets around him, our second place car, cuts the foul. One car up against the wall, that's the 78 of Safaiello. That's going to bring out a yellow. A Safaiello went to the wall in turn two. I don't know if uh, Tim has done a close-up shot of that car, but the driver's door is quite funny. All right, so our lineup looks like this. The 156 of Jacob Haas on the point. Second is going to be Scott Saval. He goes to the inside, puts uh, Kenny Schrader on the high side. Trevor Clemens inside row three. Outside is the Iceman Tommy Frazier. Looks like uh, Casey Keller will be next and Kevin Brown. Mark Garner. Again, he has three cars right now between him and Trevor Clemens. Maximum he can have is two cars. If I'm not, my understanding of the points is correct. Check out the video we had. Uh, talk to both those gentlemen uh, in our pre-race show. Keep it on the Facebook page now on pre-race. On Saturdays, we're going to go live and have interviews and stuff over in the pit area. Past few weeks or past while, I've been doing some live drop-ins. Now we're actually doing got a little set, uh, excuse me, a little set and everything to do interviews. Five laps down, 20 laps to go. Jacob Haas, he led a couple laps uh, two weeks ago, leading some now. Can he can he possibly take home uh, his first uh, first feature win as they get set to go green? Green flags out. Jacob Haas jumps to the early lead, but oh! Kenny Schrader, what a move down to the inside. Haas crosses over and here comes the, the Iceman. Oh, but we have a, 
It looks like Espino, yeah, Espino and, and Brown Tyler are Brown. in the center of turns one and two, and it's going to be a yellow flag. So I believe that is going to be a restart. Oh, as they bunch. So that will uh, negate Kenny Schrader getting the lead. As Man, he did he not continue threw it in there. The Looking at the video. Thirty three sounds like may have started that. So Haas on the point. Listen to the radio real quick. Haas on the point, second, Saval, third, Candy Schrader, fourth, Trevor Clemens, fifth, Tommy uh, Frazier, sixth, Mark Garner. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Casey Keller. Eighth is Kevin Brown. Ninth is Mark Garner. Tenth, Guy Arward in the tenth car. We're going to get the lineup set. Let's sing over the radio. All right. Going to get. Uh, so, did you get your pick out there? I did. I said Trevor. Okay. Although. Although, I will say, I was supposed to be my turn to pick first. I probably would have picked Guy, so that's okay, though. I'll take Trevor. That was, uh, you got the win last race. You got the win and you oh, yeah. first. What's I, up I with didn't, that? I didn't, I, didn't even, I, didn't even, I didn't even think about that. Oh, man, I got ripped. That's okay. 20, 20 laps to go. Anything can happen, though. That's for sure. Guy's got a ways to go. So, again, I interviewed Guy Allward earlier tonight after the driver's meeting. He kind of talked about his Iowa uh, trip. He had fun, um, was not happy with the race. He ran on the Friday night, the pre-deal, and ran well, um, but did not feel he ran as like he should have. Um, but said racing out there is totally different. Totally different out there. He said it does it intense and had a blast. He loved it out there. He didn't like the rain. Oh, yeah. We'll watch the interview coming up on this Wednesday's edition of Wiley, Wiley's Race Report. All right, lights out. Going green flag racing. As a thir 325 machine of uh, Tyler Brown comes back out onto the track. He got two laps to get that uh, body work hanging off because the yellow was not his fault. Coming around. Jacob Haas has control of the field. Green flag in the air. Kenny Schrader goes high. Cuts down low again. This time, Jacob Haas does not give him that inside lead. But here comes the Iceman. He rolls into third. Uh, oh, hits a rut. And it's going to be across the line. It's going to be Schrader. Three wide going through turns one and two. Trevor Kleiman. Here comes the 10 of Guy Allward making moves into the inside of Kevin Brown as he looks to make a pass on Trevor Clements. Three wide, Kenny Schrader may have bounced off the ball going down the front. Straight I away. believe it was Tommy Frazier that popped that thing, may have led that lap. Joe Salvi having trouble down the front stretch. He keeps it going. Oh, Kenny Schrader's up there in the, in the rough stuff. Here comes the Iceman, Tommy Frazier, in the inside of Kenny Schrader. Frazier down low. Schrader up high, down the back straightaway. Here comes Casey Keller as well, sitting in third. Right now, one car separating the top two. Oh. It's Trevor Clemens and Mark Garner in the championship to Garner right this second. Well, this race is not over. 16 laps to go. Yellow, Yellow flag flags is out. out. Yellow is out. Yellow is out. Scott Saval in turn number four is the issue. Trevor Clemens is only one spot ahead of the 76 of Mark Garner. One car separating them from his championship.
Kenny Strader on the point, the 188. Tommy Frazier second. Casey Keller third, fourth. Jacob Haas fifth. Guy Allward has climbed his way up. He started back in the 11th spot, made his way to fifth. Trevor Clemens in sixth, seventh. Kevin Brown eighth. Mark Garner ninth. Is Chuck Golden, I think? No. Uh, there's no, no. Oh, there it is. Uh, Kaufman uh, behind Garner. Then we have Golden. Chuck Golden. Then we have Tommy Climens Jr. Then we have the uh, Andrew Pierce car. He's got some body damage on the right side of that car. Cameron Swank is next. They're still lining up the back there. The kid, uh, Jacob Mount Jr. comes in after Cameron Swank. Swank just getting knocking the rust off, getting ready to run some of these big shows in that 27 car after taking the year off. Doubling them up. Kenny Schrader, Texas style restart, has the point by himself. Tommy Frazier takes the high side, puts Casey Keller down on the low side, row two. Row three, Jacob Haas, Guy Allward, row four. Trevor Clemens and Kevin Brown. Right behind Clemens is Mark Garner. The 76 and Nick Kaufman. Row six, Chuck Golden, Tommy, uh, Tommy Clemens Jr. Row seven, Cameron Swank and Andrew Pierce. Green flag back in the air. Green flag back in the air for Schrader. Oh, as Schrader rips the cushion. Here comes the Iceman. three on the front straightaway. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Yellow's back out. Yellow's back out. Right below Bob. Scott Saval, I'm hearing, got to, uh, connected with somebody and actually wheels came off the ground. Um, I'm hearing over the radio. Oh, there's a car actually into the fence down here. It's behind the post. That is, that is a 78. Seven, yeah, 78. Uh, Frank Saifiello. Got together with the 7X car. It's got Saval. It's right behind that uh, window post right there. Couldn't see him. 17 laps remain up on the scoreboard. Championship duo separated by one car. Kenny Schrader on the point. Tommy Frazier in the second spot. Casey Keller third, fourth. Jacob Haas fifth. Guy Allward sixth. Uh, Trevor Kleiman seventh. Kevin Brown eighth. Mark Garner ninth. is the Nick Kaufman car. 10th, Chuck Golden. 11th, Tommy Clemens Jr. 12th, Andrew Pierce. 13th, Cameron Schwank. 14th, Kid Jacob Allen Jr. 15th, Todd Clemens. <coughs> Excuse me, 16th. It's the uh, Gavin Espino car. 17th is Tyler Brown. 18th, Joe Salvi. 19th is Scott Foster. 20th, Nicholas Zapatero. And 21st, Scott Saval. Double it up on the front straightaway. 17 laps remain in this 25 lap main event for the IMCA Sport Modifieds and Championship Night here at Antioch Speedway. Can Kenny Schrader hold on and win? Can Tommy Fraser get around him? And never count out Casey Keller. As they roll down the back straightaway, Schrader is going to be leading up to the green flag. Green flag's gonna drop. Green flag drops as they go. Strader leads them into one. Tommy Frazier, Casey Keller go side by side down Mark the back. Mark Ryder has away. trouble in the back. He got together with Kaufman. He loses some spots. Losing more going into turn number three. Championship implications. Back there in the pack. Oh, Casey Keller steals away that position from Tommy Frazier. Guy Allward in the works now, trying to make some moves. 
keep an eye on our points, lead, our points, folks. Trevor Clemens. Trevor Clemens battling for fifth. Oh, Mark Garner is caught up in a wreck with Kid Smooth, Andrew Pierce, and that is disastrous for his points lead. Not what he needed to have happen. Oh, as he drops the window net. I don't know if that means it could be a, a night's done for him. See if there's anything on the video I can see. Battle for second. Didn't see it. Unfortunately, 19C was the cause, I'm hearing. Tom Clemens Jr. somehow involved in this incident. And you can see that the side of that car looks like it's been opened by a can opener. <clears throat> Mark Garner still in his car. Officials leaning in, talking to him. Not what Mark Garner needed or wanted towards this championship. Meanwhile, Trevor Clemens sitting in the seventh spot at the moment. As of right now, I, I would I would have to say that his positioning really doesn't even matter at this point right now. Problem with the 76 car, but he's going to see if he can uh, roll that thing. Never know. Trevor Clemens might have a problem. All right, so our leader right now. Uh-oh. Is Kenny Schrader. It is getting confirmation. Is Tom Climbers Jr. going to get the credit for credit the last lack of a better word. The cause of that wreck down there in turn number one involving Mark Garner. A lot of these cars you'll see next Saturday or next weekend down at the Watsonville for the pennant race. But we'll be racing here, of course. We got the super stocks in town. The BCRA midgets are going to be here. It's going to be fun with the sprint cars. Next Saturday, all the action can be seen on Antioch Speedway TV. That's right, Antioch Speedway TV, the Tri-State, I'm sorry, the Tommy Thompson Tribute race next Saturday. Check. Lights out, it looks like we're getting set to go green. 15 laps to go. And green flag's gonna drop. Three wide down the front straightaway. Casey Keller, Tommy Frazier, Guy Allward. And it looks like Guy Allward's going to get second place position. He wants more. As he looks to the inside of Kenny Schrader, he kind of slides up the racetrack. Him and, oh, Casey Keller, Iceman, get together. Mark Conner still able to go around back there. He's hoping something happens to Trevor Climbers for the points. I don't know that anything else is going to happen. Kevin Brown going slow up off turn number two. But up front, Kenny Schrader. He's got a, about a quarter straightaway lead over Guy Allward, the 10 car. Here comes Casey oh. Keller. One car leads the racetrack in a hurry. Tommy doesn't make the turn. Yeah. got a uh, problem that San Matero having trouble on turn number two. He keeps on going. Kevin Brown also leaves the racetrack. John Plymouth Jr. having trouble down the back straightaway. As this could potentially bring out a yellow, it's going to have to. As, oh, our leader almost gets into the back. Lots of damn Guy Allward almost gets into the back of He's battling Casey Keller. Tom Clemens Jr. leaving the racetrack up front. Kenny Schrader coming around 10 to go. This time by one car spins in turn number one. That's the 112 of Chuck Colin, I believe, over there. Yellow flag back out. Chuck Golden sitting sideways in turn number one. Yeah, 
So our rundown, 188 Kenny Schrader. This is some crazy racing here. Yeah, you can you can say that again. Tommy Frazier left the racetrack in not a normal way. That car was hauling the mail when he left. Not sure if that was on purpose or not. Some discussions going on on the last re about the last restart on the radio. That was Frazier. Waiting on the lineup to get set. Thanks again for tuning in on this beautiful Saturday. Another, excuse me, another exciting, fun-filled evening of racing here at Antioch Speedway. Got about a month and a half of racing left. Keep an eye on our schedule at AntiochSpeedway.com, AntiochSpeedway.com. Go there and hit the results. Results schedule page and that'll give you, uh, take you over to my race pass. My race pass is now where you can see the schedule. You can get that app on your phone, whether it's Android or Apple or whatever, just go to your store, download my race pass. Gives you the lineups, gives you the entries for the day, gives you the results after the races are over. Working on getting drivers to take control of their profiles and update that information as well. So, if you haven't got it yet, get my race pass on your mobile device. There's also the website you can follow as well. As we have 11 laps to go, still holding on to the point is Kenny Schrader with Guy or Casey Keller right behind him. Trevor Clymans, Jake. Did you restart it, Tim? Okay. Probably talking with Chris now. Welcome back. Uh, looks like we do have the feed back up. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Feed is back up. And we are at five laps remain. Got some debris up in turn number one here under the yellow flag. Five laps remain in the IMCA Sport Modified Main Event, 25, main, uh, 25 lap main event. Our championship night. Right now, Kenny Schrader on the point. Casey Keller in the second spot. Trevor Clemens in the third spot. Jacob Haas fourth. Fifth is Guy Allwart. Sixth, Gavin Espino. Seventh, Scott Saval. Eighth is Kevin Brown. Ninth. It's like Mark Garner has climbed back up to the ninth spot. Tenth, the 112 of Chuck Golden. Twelfth, Todd Clemens. Uh, 12th, the 27 of Cameron Swank, 13th, the 325, that's Tyler Brown, 14th, the kid, Jacob Mallet Jr., and 15th, the 22S of Scott Foster.
double on them up. We're getting ready to go back to green flag racing. Glad to have you back for the main event. Championship night here at Antioch Speedway. For the IMCA cars, anyway. One to go signal. Let the starter stand. See if we can possibly wrap this uh, feature up. It's been a crazy feature. Oh, yeah. Kenny Strader. Kenny, hold him off again. He keeps getting a lot of pressure from that KC color car. But Trevor Kleiman slowly climbing up there, up to the third spot now. So is that 76 on Mark Gardner. Garner's got to pick up about five spots right now to keep Clemens where Clemens is into. Here we go. As they get set, Kenny Schrader is going to lead him as he sees the green flag. He's going to shoot out to the lead. Oh, here comes Trevor Clemens through the middle. Real wide through one and two. Guy Elwert once again slides up the racetrack. Loses more spots, those all works. KC Keller to the inside of Schrader. He's going to be denied. Schrader's going to hold on to the lead still. Kenny Schrader, KC Keller, Trevor Clemens, Espinino. Your top four, fifth is Haas, six. Oh, this time I Schrader hold. gets too Schrader. high. He loses the lead. KC Keller inherits the lead. Trevor Clemens gets by, and that's going to bump Schrader to the third place position. Schrader makes a mistake in turn number four and loses two spots out of the lead. Put Casey Keller up on that point. Here he comes up off turn number four. Two to go this time by. Two to go. Schrader still ripping the lip up there. He thinks he can get the win from upstairs. Ah, he jumps the cushion once again and one and two. White flag's going to wave for Casey Keller. One more time around. Casey Keller, Trevor Clements. Kenny Strader, Espinito, Guy Allward, your top five. Down the back straightaway goes our leader into turn number three. KC Keller in that 38 car. Coming up off turn number four. Looking to take home another win here at Antioch Speedway. KC Keller wins. Trevor Clemens gets second, third. Kenny Strader. Fourth, Gavin Espino. And round out your top five is going to be Guy Allward. Oh, and it looks like we have the 100 RY sitting in turn four as he may have gotten around or may have gotten some help from somebody. I believe that is going to give our championship to the 2C of Trevor Clemens, your 2020 Antioch Speedway Sport Mod track champion. KC Keller winner tonight, Speedway. KC Keller, man, you had to work for it, and it took uh, Kenny Schrader making a mistake over there in turn number four before you got finally got around him. Yeah, you know, um, one and two was golden for me. I, I, I could pull it off the bottom every time. Getting over here, Kenny was running the high line, and he just had more grip up there. And, uh, you know, I, I figured if I had the opportunity, I was just going to have to throw it in there hard and, and uh, you know, let it drift up and, and grab that wet stuff without uh, cutting him off. 
And once I, once I got it, then I moved up a line just to make sure it was protected. So what was it about three and four that was causing you the trouble? Well, so, so getting in and going through one and two was, uh, you know, pretty wet still, so you had a lot of grip. Uh, the bottom of, I kept getting down on the bottom of uh, three and four, and it was pretty slick. And so, you know, you had the slick track, and then you hit the, hit the heavy stuff on the high side. So going down in turn one or two on, on multiple restarts, you went low, but I don't know if you know it or not, you had someone lower than you were trying to get underneath you. Trevor Clemens was trying to get around you there in the last few restarts. Yeah, yeah, I knew he was, uh, he was back there. Everybody in that top five right there, we had Trevor there, Guy there. I mean, you know, I knew there was some, some stiff competition on my bumper. <laughs> All right, congratulations on your win tonight here at uh, IMCA Championship Night for the IMCA Sport Modifieds. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Who do you want to thank for letting you come uh, out here and play every week? Uh, you know what? I got to thank my sponsors, uh, Kira Wright. They, uh, you know, they really helped me out with this car and getting everything together. My parents uh, in the pits back there, uh, you know, never miss a race here all the time. Um, and my wife's going to, you know, wants to come out, but you've got a little boy at home. So I, she's cheering me on at home, though. I know she is. And uh, she'll be out next weekend at the Pettit with us uh, hanging out. We'll have you back here in two weeks for the, uh, the Bill Bowers race? You betcha. I'll be here. All right. Casey Keller, winner of tonight's main event for the IMCA Sport Modifieds. Thank you. Congratulations. Head on over here now. Trevor Clymans. Congratulations. It's uh, still waiting for official word from... From up top, but uh, by my calculations, you only had three points you had to make up. You had more than enough positions. You just took home another championship for an IMCA Sport Modified here at Antioch Speedway. Congratulations. Thank you. It's uh, actually my first IMC, IMCA championship, but third here. So. Third championship in the it's formerly B Mods. Yes, only in B Mod. So you were not uh, just sitting back trying to just ride around and stay safe you were battling for the lead there oh yeah i'm gonna try to get every position i can i didn't know where mark was at or what he was doing back there and i gave it everything i had i knew i had to now on the restart the last few restarts you kept trying to get underneath casey keller who was running low getting underneath uh kenny schrader was that uh, was he too low he just couldn't get any grip down there or what's the deal yeah he was he was on the very very bottom where i wanted to be and i just had to follow him all right, well, so what close calls could you, did you have out there? Because there was a few of them. Uh, there were a few. I'm not sure which one uh, comes to mind, but there were a couple spinners, and luckily I didn't get caught up in any of it. All right, well, you got a little bit of damage back there. You uh, get that fixed. And are you going to pet it next weekend? I sure am. All right, pet it next weekend. and back here in two weeks as the champion uh, coming into the Bill Bowers. Yep. And I'll be here for that, too. Who do you want to thank for getting you out here and helping you win this championship this year? Oh, all I got to say is family. Uh, Unique Breeds, Ryland Racing, uh, CTA Prince, um, HRT, Bobby Ho. Uh, oh, that's a big bottle of champagne. All spec sheet metal. Um, he's been a huge help. BS Racing, family. Um, Trevor's Junk, obvious. Yeah, everybody. Thank you. Todd Gomez, if you're watching, he might need a piece of sheet metal back there. Yeah, I'll stretch a brand new quarter panel, too. <laughs> Ouch. Trevor Climates, congratulations, and look forward to having you back here in a couple weeks. Thank you. I will be here. All right, Trevor Climates, the uh, right now unofficial 2020 IMCA Sport Modified Champion here at Antioch Speedway. Chad, 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 Chad Chadwick. Handing out the goodies, you got confetti and champagne and stuff. Got family out here. Race cars out here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. A beautiful night for racing. Looking for Troy down there for championship night. Troy Folger taking home the championship in the IMCA modifieds here. At Antioch Speedway. Make step, make step. Two more. To to me. Chad? Oh, yeah. I have a championship night. Uh, some good racing going on out there today. Yeah, it was pretty good. It got a little rough in the, uh, in the sport mod deep main. I don't know what was going on there, but I think they were all anxious. 
What, uh, what do you have for the rest of the year as far as championships go before we get on to some other stuff? Well, we got the hobbies. Um, we got the dwarf cars and the... Uh, sprint cars still yeah, to come. Yeah, wingless sprints. So those, those events coming up next month, um, not tonight, so... I think the 10th is uh, the hobbies. And then I'm... Uh, I don't know. I don't know the other stocks on that, and then uh, the next week or two weekends after that is the yeah, yeah. first year under the belt for uh, excuse me promoting here at Antioch Speedway. It was not what you had envisioned. I can imagine. Not at all. Not at all. The whole year, no fans. Um, just televised uh, shows, trying to make it on that, and I don't know. We're just plugging away. <laughs> All right, I'm going to let you go celebrate with these drivers. Tricky Troy Folger taking home the championship, Trevor Clemens. And congratulations on another great night of racing here at Antioch Speedway. Thank you. Hopefully uh, soon we can have fans in the stands. Absolutely. Chad Chadwick down here celebrating going for the championship. Fold, Troy Folger and crew letting off some confetti. Guy all weren't leaving a racetrack. That's going to about do it tonight. Uh, Joe, what do you think up there in the booth still? For championship night was uh, one heck of a way to end it. Uh, it was a wild one for sure, especially in the sport mod uh, class. But um, overall, once again, uh, great racing. I can't complain. Uh, I've, had, I've had a blast. How about you, Wiley? So we're going to go racing next week. We got the uh, Super Stocks going to be out here. The BCRA Midgets. Looking forward to the Midgets being out here um, for a night of racing. The Wingless Sprint Car is going to be out here. It's going to be a lot of fun next Saturday night. I uh, do appreciate everybody tuning in to the IMCA Championship Night here at Antioch Speedway, live on Antioch Speedway TV. Um, do apologize for the uh, brief technical difficulties. I got you back up to see the end of the, the Sport Mod race. And Joe... You know, the, the regular season for the Modifieds and the Sport Modifieds may be over, but there's still a lot of racing to do for these two classes this year. Yeah, um, you said it. We got a, we've got the big shows coming up, so heavier, heavier, heavier competition, hopefully, and uh, even, even more exciting racing. All right, that's going to do it for tonight. Thanks for tuning in again next Saturday night. Don't forget to more racing on, I, on Antioch Speedway TV. Keep an eye out this, this week on Antioch Speedway Buyer Promotions Facebook and Antioch Speedway.tv Facebook. Antioch Speedway Announcer Facebook and YouTube. On Wednesday night will be the Wiley's Race Report. Next Saturday, uh, pre-race, we will have a pre-race show live and direct from the pit area with driver interviews and other interviews. Back there, we got a little uh, studio we're building or a little set we're building back there. And you can see all that live and free on Antioch Speedway by Promotions Facebook page. So don't miss that. Um, that'll be happening uh, pre-race. Somewhere 3 or 3.30 or so, we'll have that up and running. Uh, we'll get set. To keep an eye on it. We'll get a timeout for you. Uh, but until then, and until this week, again, Wiley's Race Report. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock is when it's scheduled to be released. Until then, I'm Wiley Wade. He's Joe Peterson. We've been having a lot of fun at Antioch Speedway, and we hope you've been having a lot of fun watching. Until next time, good night, everybody.